Hey guys, this is Jim Fix, a.k.a. Fillmore. For those of you who love QF, a podcast about Howard Stern, and would like to donate some money, there's two ways now you can do it. Uh, you can join our Patreon page, which is listed in the graphic you're seeing now. But also, if you'd rather not do a subscription-based thing, even if it's a buck a month or what have you, uh, you can use our PayPal account, which would be jimfix76 at gmail.com. Uh, and you can donate whatever you like, however you like, uh, one of those two ways, and we'd more than appreciate it if you'd like to do so. Thank you very much. Would you sure. pretend that I am Bahati? I'm sitting here. I, I'm going to be honest with you. It's hot in the garage. I'm wearing a bra top. I okay. have my, and I only have panties on. I'm being honest. Can you go a little slower? Just talk about it. <laughs> you have underwear on under that robe? I do. That's all I have on, though. Oh my god. <laughs> um so Easy. Wait, you're in your garage. You're in your garage. Bahati is uh, I'm Bahati. You leave it alone. You know what? You're doing just fine. I, I should only look like you. All right, so I'm Bahati. We're in the garage. I'm bathed, I'm moisturized. I've completely shaven for you. And I'm sitting here listening to my husband. Gross. Gross. <laughs> I've had dinner at Mar-a-Lago with Donald many times, not at the same table. But he would come over, he would give me a tour of Mar-a-Lago. I, I, I've been there, I told you, it's like heaven. Oh, it's hot, it's burn my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Dry oatmeal. Uh, I need one. What? Oh. On it. Where you could just put them in your ear and, like, they'd be Bluetooth or something. Because I need to, I can't even afford to buy socks anymore, you know? No. Well, all right. Well, hey, yeah. I'm glad to hear you're doing okay. And uh, I have my routine. And the days go so fast because I just sit in my room and entertain myself. Like when I was a little boy. Time means nothing. Yeah. No such thing as time. <laughs> if I didn't have to shower and eat, I'd just sit in that room. I'm yeah, telling you, I, it's that it's that narcissism where you think the whole world revolves around you and you're entitled to do whatever you want. But, you know, when you're a football player and you're used to being catered to and you're the most famous football player in the world, you can get caught up in that. And then when your wife says, hey, you know, you need to take the garbage out and drive the kids to school, you get resentful and you go, don't you know who I am? You know, I can't get that image of your dad playing piano with you on your with, with you on his lap. It's just uh, I don't usually feel stuff. So this never happens to me. <laughs> um Welcome, everybody, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. As always, I'm your host, Fillmore, a.k.a. Jim Fix, and with me is Raven, the breakdown assassin. Hey, Rave. Hi, Fillmore. How are you? <laughs> just not as happy as you are, I'm certain, but just about. I mean, this is a last-minute kind of thing, guys. We recorded most of this yesterday, and now we're recording a little add-on because I fucked up a little bit with Zoom. That's my bad. But um, when we're in, we found out that... Uh, Wig's going to have the whole summer off. I think Raven was mentally doing a jig the whole week. <laughs> I have never been better. I feel like a weight has been lifted off of me. Yeah. I'm like, if you could see me, I like, I'm mentally doing cartwheels. Yeah. I'm just ecstatic and relieved to know that I get two months back of my life. So thank you, Jennifer Witz. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to play something for you guys and for Raven for the first time so she hasn't heard it and we're going to see how this sounds. Ronnie pegging Stephanie Vegas. Adios, mini driver. Kaplan, Janice, Jersey home, up for sale, too bad, so sad, ding dongs, pothead. Baba Booey, Johnny Red, Fire Bit, Selling House, Asshole Boss, Hate the Scots, Connecticut, Nervous Wreck. Howard, NT, Hate Your Gus, Horse Wipe, Summer Break, Lucky Charms, Adderall, Metabusal, Floaty Shits. 
just to condense it, guys, because we lo- <laughs> we lost we lost about a half hour, and I'm sorry it's on one side. I fucking fr- I made it mono, unfortunately, and, and didn't uh, render it for both sides. But um, the uh, we just wanted to summarize a little bit yesterday in a shorter form of what we actually lost. And basically, he uh, we it was announced that uh, on Monday, I believe, of this week. Yes, the this 28th is the first of week. June. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and so beginning of July, now that he uh, is taking the full summer off as opposed to normally when it's like two weeks here during what Memorial Day weekend? July 4th. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Independence Day. And then another two weeks somewhere near like the end of August. And then coming back into September, Labor Day weekend is usually when they come back, I believe. It, all of that plus another two weeks um, yeah. at the end of July, beginning of August. So. Uh huh. Yeah, it's like two weeks on, two weeks off during the summer for him, typically. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so as a result, um, <laughs> Raven Raven did the whole week. If he had done a nothing but three days of scat talk, I think she could have got through it much much easier than normal, <laughs> just because yeah. of that news. Because we get we actually get to catch up with breakdowns, and we um, also uh, managed to get um, like other projects that we wanted un- un- to go get underway sooner rather than later. And just a quick announce, guys, we're proud to announce that uh, our Podbean and and collective downloads uh, just uh, shot over 100,000 downloads this weekend. So thank you so guys so much. We love you and keep on uh, keep on downloading is all we can say. Amazing. So thrilled. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. And we're proud to announce also that we're going to be start doing Patreon only content for it's as a it's really a treat for the Patreon subscribers and try to uh, incentivize them to people to to join that, and it'll it'll be weekly stuff as far as we can determine. Uh, it may be even twice weekly, it depends, but we we haven't sorted it all out yet. And it's going to be extra content, and it, you're still going to get your Sunday shows. That's not going to stop, and you still may get some Thursday shows here and there because we want to advance some narrative. But um, just a, a heads up to anybody who's not on our Patreon or donating to PayPal or what have you. But it's definitely a Patreon-based thing, not PayPal. Um, at any rate, um, we're going to go through this real quick. And so this differs because he has the whole summer off. My question to you was, was this part of his contract originally and he just never announced it until now? Or do you think this is on the fly Jennifer Vitz chicanery? Oh, no, for sure. This was part of the contract that Buckwald could not negotiate him out of. I firmly believe that um, Jennifer Witz is squeezing him out, is uh, downsizing him, Mm -hmm. his show, possibly the staff with the pay cuts and uh, maybe even lack of studio time. So it's like a, a money time space conundrum (laughs) (laughs) continuum, if you will, that, um, she has come in this year brand new. She's not Jim Meyer. She's not Scott Greenstein. And she has, um, I think, an agenda. And mm-hmm. part of that agenda is putting King Baby in a corner for two months and shelving him <laughs> to the point where he is. It's, it's a control thing. It's almost uh. like a uh, chess match with the two of them. And mm-hmm. I think he's going to go crazy with no outlet to speak, nowhere to go. Yep. Um you know, stuff's going to happen in the news and he's not going to have an outlet. He mm-hmm. may, he may revert to Twitter, which he never posts on. He, he randomly did one this week, which could be preparing us for future stuff. I don't know of a, a painting he traced of some right. ugly trees on the beach with a fence that man, <laughs> our Facebook page lit him up on the comparisons of that picture to him and Beth and their life, oh, big time. how dead they are and just how, the the trees aren't even straight and they have the curvature oh, I'll of see a, if I can... <laughs> a question mark like it's fine yeah Great. for your benefit guys I'll see if I can post that photo and uh, and exp- and just show you exactly what we we're mocking and because it, it was all traced like there's no way he had there's no way this guy did that work it, although the colors seem about right it's it looks like if you if you were colorblind and you didn't know what red it was and you didn't know what you know tan was that's what it might look like um, so this is the other thing. We, when we said, when Raven mentioned pay cuts, we of course are presuming, we don't know for a fact, but based on our Marbles our, uh, episode that we did, uh, Carrie and I postulated that, of course, as some have speculated in the, uh, in the, uh, no, sorry, it's not even speculation, it's documented. Uh, the analyst said, 
any of the big names that were on Sirius or Sirius XM that started off with like say a fifty million dollar contract. There, when they re-signed for a second contract, it was 50% of the original contract. So it stands to reason that Wig has been no different, and especially since he never met the subscriber bonuses. So there's no incentive to give him the same money because they had to shoehorn SiriusXM into cars to make up, uh, make ends meet, basically. And they're still losing money. They're not making, as far as I know, SiriusXM is not flourishing. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, the pandemic shut down like rental companies for cars mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and they sold off a ton of their cars because they were losing money. People couldn't travel. People couldn't rent cars. So they mm-hmm. basically sold them to people as, you know, used cars. Yeah. And so now they're charging a buttload of money to rent a car. If you if anybody's out there trying to travel, look out yeah. look in advance because the the rates are out of control. Yeah. What used to be like 15 to $20 is now like 60 to $80 a Jeez. day. Better to buy it's, a car. It's, <laughs> oh, my God. They're raping people. Yeah. So the, so the, 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 if we do the math, guys, 100 becomes uh, 100 and a million per year in 2006 becomes, let's say, 50, 60 million in 2011 becomes half of that. So 30, 25 million in 2015 becomes like 12, 15, maybe between 10 and 15 million in 2021. So if you think for a minute, Wig is getting that pay cut and not cutting the staff, you're out of your fucking mind. (laughs) So as a result, that takes us into the big you know, home ownership uh, saga that's happened in the last year, starting with Shuli and Br- starting with Brent, I think, and then Shuli, where they all, yes. well, in Brent's case, I don't know if they were, was Brent, they were in, New- they were renting in New York, perhaps, and then had a place in Florida already? Brent and Shuli were both renting in New York, I believe, or maybe yeah. Jersey for Brent, right. but right. Shuli was in New York. So, yeah, they both went south, Brent to Tampa and Shuli to Alabama. Mm-hmm. And so what happened with um, uh, Bowie, he put his house in Connecticut up for sale. I forget the name of the, the, name of the location exactly. And it was $3.2 million, I think? Yes, in Connecticut, okay. $3.2 million. And so as a result, um, we, we saw that, we, like, that didn't surprise us too much, except for the fact that he, they only got the house in 2007. And yes, the kids are moving out, and it was way too much house then, it's too much house now. All of a sudden, fucking Bowie Gatsby, uh, as and Mary are looking, at, you know, new money <laughs> Bowie is looking to, you know, move down out of the penthouse and uh, down, downsize. We have to figure, that, not just him, Kaplan as well. Kaplan lives in Jersey which, which, with a, a house that's 10 times less the cost or the price of the house that yeah. Bowie has. But why are they moving? What's the purpose for moving? Well, it's kind of a seller's market right now. And seeing, you know, if they're reading the tea leaves like Brent and Shuley did, they've mm-hmm. got to know and seeing a decrease in their pay cut probably since January or since the new contract, whenever that goes into effect for them, that mm-hmm. things were going downward. And for them, you know, if they could capitalize on the value of their house at this point, they could buy something farther away yet. Mm-hmm cheaper and more space and then mm-hmm. take that money and start a retirement account because lord knows this show it's it's going down the toilet fast mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean if we didn't tell you like a year ago when we started this or 16 months ago when this all began then i hope you guys have caught on that you know fans are turning serious is turning jennifer mm-hmm. Wicks knows what's mm-hmm. up that's right and even the staff realizes it now so it's very clear what's happening right. and i call it the big squeeze by serious. Yeah, and I think in, in actual fact, um, it's 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 just you're right, it might be one of those things where the contract is so low now, if they had to buy them out, it would be a 50 million based on the math we just gave you a few minutes ago 50 million and get the fuck out but I don't believe that's the case, I think it's exactly as you said, they're going to force him to downsize, sorry, um, lower his hours, because he's going to, or he's going to insist on that just as a saving face thing, because he's making that much less money Right. And it's going to drive him nuts. He, it's going to drive him absolutely batshit to have that much time off. It, it's He's going to be even closer to Howard Hughes' level of mm-hmm. craziness. And 
the thing <laughs> the thing that I look at is all this reduction in pay, time, yep. and space. They're not going to get the money to redo the studio again. Nope. I mean, for Christ's sake, Andy Cohen is eyeing it up, slobbering and frothing all over that place, right? looking to see what he can do. Who says Tom Morello won't get his ass in there with all of the shows he's doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, Andy's got two channels now, mm -hmm. and he's the first back in the studio. So, like I've said, that he, you know, is uh, runner up to Wiggy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as far as the face of Sirius goes. But Tom Morello is a close second to him. Right. So we shall see. The other thing is, remember, back in December, I think it was Sirius cleaned house. Like they got rid of Jason Ellis, That's Jenny right. McCarthy, and we found mm -hmm. out Barstool was leaving. Yep. So those are three kind of big names that had a fan base, mm -hmm. had people that followed them, listened to them, and no more of that. So mm -hmm. it was kind of obvious. We just didn't, you know, we're putting all the clues together now because we know a lot more with the staff changing houses, yep. selling their houses, Andy Cohen, um, and now the summer vacation, which is an 11% reduction in work mm. if the number is true i don't think he's doing 100 shows i think he's doing 80 something mm -hmm. he had mentioned 82 but again it could be a staggered thing over five years and that might be the average is 82 yeah. like mm -hmm. it might start out at 100 this year and then 90 80 70 60 over yeah. five years right so there's that but just to everybody listen up he is off for a minimum of 68 days and a maximum of 74. He may come back the day after Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Labor Day, which mm -hmm. would be 68 days. Or he'll just come back the Monday after Labor Day, which would be 74 days off. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, I wish him a lot of luck having great conversations <laughs> with Beef, Dolty <laughs> Beef, biggest adult in the world. Yeah, And, uh, you know, he can police her for sugar and run, like, inspections all over the house yeah. looking for Lucky Charms and gummy bears. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, you know, he doesn't want to go anywhere. So I'm sure if we see him out and about in the public, that's a, pos that's a slight possibility. But more than likely, she'll just convince him to have dinners with people. I don't think he's going to have people over because he doesn't want to have to clean the whole house after they come mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. But at least if he goes somewhere, he can exit stage door, you know, quickly yeah. and at least spend an hour and 15 minutes with him over dinner and drinks right? <laughs> and rush himself out of there. Right. Because he's such a fucking party. So that ties, that ties into the CDAN article that came out on 630. The, um, when these, these are now coming out constantly about wig and, uh, from his site and they never used to, we discussed this in the previous episode where we discussed, uh, uh, the more recent blinds. Now, the we're going to go to the Dame Bethman page. D Dame Bethman page, which is Beth's fan page on Blogspot. Uh, dot com, and the article is called "The Golden Goose Gets Cooked." So let me just get the uh, thing right. And guys, if you get a chance, check it out. It's some really good reading, some fun uh, pictures, uh, photoshops, or just like kind of. What Perez Hilton used to do to people, but to uh, Wiggy and Beth. Yeah. So just drawing on pictures and dissecting stuff. Yes. Uh, and investigating the Instagram page that she and does. That's right. And done by herself or himself. This person is not affiliated with us, with anybody that we know of, uh, and not even with the old place. They tried desperately to get her uh, and or him and never could. We think it's a woman, so I'm going to go with that. And um, But either way, we don't know. And we we support them absolutely. We just forget sometimes that it exists, Dame Beth Dame Bethman. But the writing is so funny, and um, they do such great work consistently that we have to give it a, a notice. And so I'll read it uh, as far as um, I was uh, I did yesterday. Howard Stern said it on his stale radio show on February 15th, 2021 in an on-air bit for the show with a character that pretended to be his boss, Jennifer Witz. And she said that Howard was her, quote, golden goose and that Sirius needs him. Yeah, that was a bit scripted for the show when the opposite is true and Witz is cooking her golden goose and roasting him over an open flame. So this nice. was the bit that he wrote, they wrote a transcript. Uh, 
fake Jennifer Vitz. You're my bitch, Stern, and don't forget it. I don't care if there's a nuclear bomb. You're doing the damn show. You hear me? Howard, yes. And Jennifer, please take my apology. I'm here on President's Day. I didn't realize during a... And then she's laughing. What is so funny? Oh, Stern, you don't get it. I don't care if there's a plague. North Korea invades New York City. Don't you get it, Stern? You're my golden goose. We need you. <laughs> okay. okay, so Howard scripted this lame bit and believes he is serious as golden goose and serious needs him. Ha, ha, ha. Howard is a pent spent hen that's laid too many rotten eggs and is being sent home for two months. Yes. It's hardly, hardly worth calling him back because all he does is report on the latest round of celebrity deaths while yelling at deaf Robin to turn on her mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, truer words were never said. Okay. Like, three days in a row this week, she did not have her mic on at the beginning of the show. Yeah. And he's begging her to turn her mic on. And she's like, it's just, it's further away than ever. Like, what the fuck? Are... That, yeah. And, he, and he's been doing passive aggressive Jennifer Vitz shit since the onset. And you can, and this is, a, this is clearly want something to fuck with her about and this is his way of doing it as a joke but he's too much of a pussy to directly give her shit yep it's it's so obvious now that we stand back six months later he's been doing these jennifer witz things since contract talks and post contract talks mm -hmm. and it's all just to shove an iron spit up her ass because mm -hmm. he's not happy he's a spoiled child Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I mentioned this later because, again, we're in the space-time continuum here of recording. Mm -hmm. But just keep in mind, like, other two contracts since the initial serious contract, he used to say, I don't know if I'll be back. They yeah. even tricked Sal into saying, because he was late one day, oh, didn't you hear that I didn't resign? And he they had him in tears. So mm -hmm. those two contracts... He was basically playing a joke on us and his staff saying, I don't know if I'm coming back. But this year in particular, he did not do that. That's right. This was the one year we did not hear one peep on the contract talks. Mm -hmm. It was completely him just avoiding the whole topic, even when Marianne <laughs> would bring it up. And then it was this big, you know, announcement. And it was like, yay. And so here we are. But there's also talk of November and December off. So fingers crossed, guys. Let's have a prayer circle. Let's <laughs> hope and pray that we get this time off. I am You're... so, I can't even tell you how ecstatic I am that things yeah, are Christ... going this way. It's, it's Christmas just in July. Yeah. It is. It's Christmas and birthday all in one. Okay, so I was going to say, instead of that, the, the scenario that Raven gave you, what we got was bullshit press releases about how Spotify is looking for him. <laughs> and then Spotify, <laughs> we, we discussed this at the time. I think it was December, November at least. And uh, Spotify said, no, there was never anything in the cards for getting stern. Like, So once you've been cucked by Spotify's execs and by their press department, the PR, and saying, no, we were never, you know, we, ne we never had an intention. That's all bullshit. Now you're caught in a lie. And that isn't the press fucking up. That is your... PR team fucking up by throwing that out there, thinking we were stupid and Spotify is stupid. And uh, and also clear jealousy about Joe Rogan getting that $100 million deal. And exactly. I thought originally Rogan would be taken, this, this is something ancillary to the, the point, I thought originally when Joe Rogan signed the deal with Spotify that all of his YouTube stuff would be fucking cleared out. It's not. There's still clips on, on YouTube and uh, which is a smart move because a lot of people you know, they don't know if they want Spotify. They don't know if it's worth, you know, you know, investing in. And so I don't know who's happy. I don't know who uses it. We use a number of apps ourselves. Uh, like people, various people use different apps to listen to our show. Um, but either way, we're going to, I'm going to read the one last bit of, uh, paragraph and then Raven's going to take over and read uh, her her part. Howard has been kicked to the curb by serious honchos in a deal he reportedly tried to renege on and fought it tooth and nail to try and stop them from evicting him in the serious, from the serious building and shelving him for July and August 2021. Yes, Howard even revealed to Andy Cohen when he recently phoned into the Stale Stern show, and by the way, we're, you're going to hear this audio later, guys, 
that his office was already empty and Sirius HQ building <laughs> in, New, in New York City. Why would his office already be emptied out? Wasn't Howard planning on returning to Sirius building post-COVID invasion? As this blogger has said several times, Sirius doesn't want Stern back in that building and he is fighting it. Now we find out that Sirius was already moving the jerk out with or without a COVID <laughs> invasion because Howard slipped and said his office was already emptied out. The COVID's helped Howard save face in that he raced to his bargain basement bunker inside his Hamptons Ant Hotel, where he lived nice. with his failed model wife, Beth Ostrowski Stern, saying it was due to COVID invasion and businesses were shutting down everywhere, sending people to work from home. Nope, Stern was being sent home anyway. Uh, so, and then they they bring up a, an older blog post, which you can read. Yep. It's no wonder he's so happy about COVID. He didn't have to admit that he got sent in the corner for time out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's and, stuck with nay. Yeah, exactly. His, his beautiful wife. Right. Sweet so love. the next part, uh, can you can you read that last bit here? Uh, starting right from there. there? Yep. Yeah. The point is, Stern was already being sent home, and he wanted it kept secret until his agent, Don Buckwald, could supposedly find a loophole to the contract renewal. It's a renewal of his original contract he signed in 2005 to start working for Sirius in January of 2006. Starting with his new contract renewal in 2021, Howard did the fake Jennifer Witz character on his stale satellite radio show because he was furious that she was holding him to that contract by sending him home for two months when insiders are alleging that Howard's fan, singular, not plural, (laughs) can expect another major shutdown of the Stern show to happen in November and December of 2021. Mm -hmm. Please, please, God, (laughs) please, if you're listening, I want this so bad. Me too, for the sheer reason that December is such a busy month for me. I mean, for most people it is, but not for Christmas reasons, just for work reasons. And uh, we struggle, I struggle to get shit out there because of how much is crowbarred in the end of the semester but uh either way yeah cr- fingers crossed get your all your rub- rabbits rub the rabbit's foot you know <laughs> throw salt throw buckets of salt <laughs> over your shoulder uh how about the next one howard fired off a ghost written article to the <laughs> new york post today <laughs> to pretend his fan is outraged <laughs> That he is taking two months off when it's just that Sirius has tons of old, stale, stern material they need to make some money from with sponsors. And Howard does not have a third channel, so he needs to vacate his main channel, Howard 100, to free up space to air old shit shows and reruns of his music specials. Since Howard 101 is mainly for all his stale daily show reruns. Mm-hmm. Howard is furious that Andy Cohen now has two channels, one being a music channel, and the scuttlebutt is Howard is badgering wits, demanding Andy to Andy take two months off also, so Howard won't be embarrassed that he is the only one at Sirius that is being shelved <laughs> for July and August. <laughs> Can you believe it? Watch what happens, Andy, with your live show, but hey, we've got your back. <laughs> so you read oh the, the you read gosh. the you read the last paragraph. Would you like me to read it? Just to in Yeah, take a turn. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Sirius is trying to make some use of all of those millions of sh- hours of Stern show shit tapes and useless music specials featuring Green Day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is this a fucking joke? Green Day? Jennifer Witz may reconsider and just throw out all those old tapes in a bonfire of the vanities. But Howard went insane when Andy got his new music channel. Uh, which, by the way, I guess Raven said Raven said it's not very good, but at least he has it. Um, oh. All right, I'll just say this: it's it's eclectic, kind of dancey, some old rhythm and blues, and just it's kind of all over the place. Uh, it's, it's what like, you'd expect from Andy. Maybe like I haven't Andy. sampled it enough. I don't know. Yeah. It could be fun. I don't know. So uh, Andy got his new channel and Vitz had to contain that monster and some are alleging that Howard is under <laughs> what? Uh, this What this blogger said months ago, alleged house arrest and he can't return to the Sirius building because it's out of range. Well, his arrest could be a Section 8 like Corporal Klinger from MASH. <laughs> <laughs> so, so all along we thought Wiggy was happy being at home. But now I'm thinking that's just his cover story for knowing he's going to have this two months jail sentence at home with the beef. And 
this makes it look like he is thrilled to be home painting, journaling, fountain penning, whatever, you know, studying jazz, jazz, the transgender <laughs> yeah. Yeah. young lady. So I don't know. It's It's hard to say, like. Yes, I think he's happy being at home, but I also believe he's going to go stir crazy. Big and time. this is going to be one of the toughest things in his life. Also, his parents are like 97 and 94. Mm -hmm. So if his parents were to pass away over the summer, that could send him into an even bigger downward spiral. Yeah, he'll be into a tailspin. And meanwhile, um, guys, we're going to chronicle it as we always do. Um, and the... Uh, the follow-up is so pretty soon now you're going to hear the audio for um, what we've been talking about. But one more thing. So you, you've seen all the articles. There's a New York Post. There's page six. There's uh, all kinds of articles following up. But it's all those bullshit sites, and they're all repeating. It's like everybody took from the AP, and it's like, oh, this is, you know, <laughs> this is for fresh take. No, it's all the same photocopies. <laughs> I swear to God, it's a single copy and paste for each and every one of them. Yep. Of all the information is exactly the same. I feel like deja vu every time I try and find something new. It's mm -hmm. all the same stuff, all the same information. It might be cleaned up a little bit or, yeah, or made juxtaposed worse. <laughs> a bit. But otherwise, yeah, it's all the freaking same. And one thing I forgot to mention when we were recording yesterday is thank you, Matthew Schultz, for the Photoshop you did that I requested. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait till everybody sees it. I hope you guys like it. And, uh, yeah, on with the show. It makes, it makes just as much sense that he, he, the contract calls for an extended vacation and less time. Cause we said he's going to either do a less hours per day or less days per year. In addition to the, all the few days that he does. Well, let's consider this. If they're pre-recording shows, cause honestly, there's very little timely stuff. We have to ask ourselves every day in the thread, is it pre -recorded? has anything been said that is in the news yesterday right some days yes some days no mm -hmm. so if they're pre-recording he's working even less days he's still doing the same number of shows yep but personally he's working less days he might be working a double day pulling overtime working six hours maybe seven or eight tops but he also has to pre-record uh their gardine slop reads and <laughs> <laughs> zip recruiter and the female like uh, libido <laughs> enhancers the yeah. sex toys from yeah. some pink cherry yeah. like he's he's still working when he's not on the air but I'll, i'm just gonna say it's minimal because you know his reading skills are limited but i'll give him that he's doing another half hour of live reads possibly during a week Possibly. Well, the, the more when we get closer to present day in the breakdowns, um, there's a day where he bitches about he talks about he talks shit about Wolfman Jack and how Wolfman Jack pre-recorded his show. And what we know about Howard is when he starts projecting like this, it really is him trying to cover the fact that he is pre-recording. He's talking shit about someone else as if it doesn't mm -hmm. apply to him when we know he's giving himself away. It's just, it's not a conspiracy. It's just, we know his patterns of thought and we know how he, you know, if he's kicking, he's talking bullshit about podcasts is because his own show is a podcast. Or he's listening to some hate podcasts that are out there and there's a lot more than just us in the old place. Oh, yes. There's, I've, I've found quite a few people that are, they might not be as long of a podcast, but they're still right. putting stuff out on YouTube. Yep. And, um, you know, his 79 thinking can't help but project what's on his mind, whether mm -hmm. it's podcasts, whether it's pre-recording. Mm -hmm. He is just, he's incessant on, you know, speaking the, the horrible thoughts that are in his head. So mm -hmm. that's what we get. So the next thing was, there's a CDAN article that came out recently and it's kind of, it's, it's almost fluff in terms of how they usually are. Usually they're a lot more salacious, but this is the one from Crazy Days and Nights. Uh, two things at play here. This is from 630. So just a couple days ago, two things at play here. I don't think the permanent a plus list shock jock can handle two plus months alone with the wife without the, <laughs> without the marriage collapsing. I don't also, I also think it is 50 50, whether he reports back on time mm, and then yeah. it, 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 it references, of course, the, uh, the article, the bullshit deal and shit. So go ahead, please. All right. Well, two thoughts here. They don't see each other out in, uh, boy town girl town hamptons home no they don't 
um, maybe I want to say once a week, maybe they do are going to a friend's house for dinner. Maybe she mm-hmm. roped them into that because of mm. some star fucking they had to do. Mm-hmm. But overall, I just don't see how he can go that he's never gone this long. He's never gone more than two weeks without having an outlet for his voice, for his thoughts, for his parent impressions, his COVID lambasting, yep. uh, political Trump bashing. We're not a political pod. We're not taking a side here, but he does for sure. And he makes at least an hour to an hour and a half every day of political COVID talk, mm-hmm. uh, freaking death dedications like Masks, Casey Kasem, vaccine. Yeah. Like people whose families died and just, oh, my gosh, it's it's the farthest thing you could imagine from comedy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it, it's a really sad state of affairs, which mm. makes me so happy to have mm. 10 weeks off. <laughs> and it's not this is the sad part. He's taking 10 weeks off, but we aren't. And even though we get no. you know that time without the regular show, so we're going to have breakdowns to catch up to. And we're pretty much almost caught up. And we're going to get there. And this is today's part of it as well. Um, but we're going to start play, playing some of that. And, and we apologize in advance for playing with time here, but we just thought it was more timely to get this out and then take you into our usual scheduled mockery. Yep. Yeah, th- this is a hot topic in the news. So this is takes priority. Yeah. The other stuff is evergreen. You guys can listen to it a year <laughs> from now. It won't matter. Trust won't. me. <laughs> exactly. So, so we're, we're going to get to that when we get to it. It's all boring slop, but we, we're going to make the most out of it. And yeah. today we're focusing on his announcement, mm-hmm. his uh, um, retort to fan madness, fan, not fans. Mm-hmm. And um the Andy Cohen segment. I clipped yeah. some of that. So let's get into that. Let's hear the announcement. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. A quick show note. Um, we will, uh, of course, this is the last week before our usual summer break. This is the usual. last week of shows before our usual summer break. See you in September. Rob. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm glad you stopped it there. Okay. He said usual twice. Yeah. And then he said, September usual is two weeks, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Not this. He's trying to pull one over on us again, saying this is normal. Like some fans, he's probably thinking he has new fans wrong. But to us old old heads, we know better. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see right through this. And so many people did on all Mm -hmm. over all over social media, not just Facebook. Yep. Oh, my goodness. What? Yes, that's right. And Robin gets the fucking Golden Globe for best actress, best new actress there. Oh, my God. Like, she had to know all this. She, she was she was told this. She guaranteed, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, she knew. She yeah. knew when he signed in December. Because you think about it, you know, she might be getting surgery. I have a lot of theories of what he's doing over his summer, by the way. Oh, okay. We'll get into that later. But, okay. yeah, I think there was a lot of planning and that he, him and her, I think, queue up their schedules so that in case, you know, she has chemo in case mm. she has surgery she needs mm-hmm. or health fit doctor, whatever surgeries, any, mm-hmm. any of that stuff that, yeah, they, they may have negotiated this and she knew all along mm-hmm. they talk. Yep. That's a scheduling note. I must tell you with peace and love. What, what, what? Uh, that I'm, sure, I'm sure there's going to be some conversation about that. If you take phone calls. People do not like when we take time off, I know, but, uh, you know, listen, I'm not getting any younger, but uh, in order to keep the quality of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> oh, okay. Stuff so writes itself. It does, actually. When you start, you, when you start hearing it with certain ears. And proper modulation. But we think we have some excellent programming available this summer <laughs> that you guys will love because of our Excellent. 10 billion hours of archives and the way we're cutting mm-hmm. them up um we the way we're cutting them up you mean the way we're editing them to the point where they're yep. they only they don't exist past 2018 like before 2018 it, it is amazing i've not heard you have access to Sirius, so you if there are these retrospective things do you ever spot check them and listen to them and kind of randomly hear anything that's older than a certain date oh you got to be kidding no freaking way Seriously. i 
I have to listen to the show twice just to do clips. Yeah. So by then I am like knocked. I am like le- I'm blurry eyed. <laughs> Stern I, there's no way I'm reaching for the bottle. I am I am looking for something to smoke. <laughs> I am done. I I can't. I honestly. Just, yeah. <laughs> I do listen to old clips that I find stuff that he kind of leaks out from the past. Yeah. I love those the yeah. unedited stuff. Oh, but yeah. checking for edits, no, that's not me. You, no, no, I can't. I not, no. not edits, but I'm saying like when they do these retrospective, these these Sternthology things, if you've ever has anyone ever told you like, oh, wow, you know, they played a an old clip from, you know, Jackie or the, they played like something from, you know, 2002. Yeah, no one's ever come to me and said anything about that. I've never checked in and found any of that. OK, Um, I randomly maybe once in a blue moon, we'll just be like, oh, what garbage are they putting on today? And it's usually just it's like, uh, oh, what's that? That singer Brandy. uh, He loves her. Um, Brandy Carlisle. Brandy Carlisle. Yeah, it'll be something like that. Or um, some interview, David Spade, Seth Rogen. So Tracy Morgan. So I don't care about. Yeah, the whole point of the uh, first of all, there's a tune in channel that someone pointed out ages ago. There's on the tune in app. If anybody uses it, it's not bad. Actually, I like it a lot. Um, the there's a channel that has a plays constantly old stern shit that for some reason is allowed to it's unfettered. It's almost a, maybe tune in paid for the rights to it. I have no idea, but it's still going. Check it out if you if you want to see old stuff and you could just, you know, screen cap. You could just uh Record it as you see fit, you know, if you have the right software on your phone or at home and uh, oh. on your computer. Uh, but the thing is, the, if you have all these fucking billions of hours, why are you only hearing like 5% of them? Mm-hmm. Well, which was yeah, a common what good is all that. If right. Not- which was which is a common criticism back when they went with Sirius. And then Chris Rock came in and said, listen, all I heard is the same fucking history of Howard Stern bullshit. Why don't we have some old whatever dice interviews when we have some old you know like whatever and so they curated it in such a way that no one really found value in what they were cutting so the, what what kind of bullshit are they going to get from the summer that people really going to pay for they're going to lose whatever few subscribers they have left yeah i mean sirius really has no idea of how worthless those tapes really are yes to any stern fan listener mm-hmm. that they, they just there, there's nothing of substance. There's nothing groundbreaking. There's right. All, all the salacious stuff has been cut out. All the mm-hmm. truly like belly laugh stuff with Artie, with Jackie Gilbert. Yep. Gone, gone, yes. gone, gone. Not right. Never to be heard again. So, yeah. It's, what are they? What kind of value do they see in those tapes? I, I'll never understand that. Right. If you don't play them, I don't understand the value. If you've got them, yeah, okay, it makes sense. And you can even program around the ones that are really like when Gilbert and Artie are going out saying all the like different words for African American <laughs> going like Fred <laughs> rerun Barry, like Blackberry, <laughs> you know, like yeah. African American Barry and shit like that. You know, like bits that that would might get them in trouble. You could just edit around them. You don't have to edit them. Just use other ones, other appearances, but why not play them? Well, because it just shows you exactly how unfunny the current show is. Honestly, Sirius might be just squeezing him out and the listeners in the same effect where (laughs) they're preparing us for like, (laughs) look, someday this is all you're going to get. And we're, we're like reducing your dosage of Howard. Yeah. Yeah. And we're reducing our payouts, our wallet, our expenditures Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the same time. Right. So we're in search of new talent, uh, Tom Morello, Andy Cohen, Whoever. any of these other folks that are they're going to make space for at Sirius. So if yeah, if I'm Wiggy, I am shit in my pants. <laughs> I've never, you know, if I'm him, I'm thinking I've never allowed this. Yeah. What this, people are going to find other stuff that's more entertaining. Yes. And who the hell am I going to rant to? What am I going to do? Am I going to do a show by myself with puppets in the basement? Am I going to talk to Robin every day? No, no, he's not going to talk to beef. That's for sure. Those two (laughs) brain cells in her head are almost blown out. Yeah. So held held together by uh, lucky charms. 
Um, well, the thing is, like, serious they, that studio space they could use it. They could make re- use it into make it into recording studios. They could use they could rent mm-hmm. out the space to other people who are actually doing shows. They could, you know, on an, an hourly basis, whatever pod people who want a podcast but don't have a place to do it. Boom, right there. It's all set up. So, um, and it's a little curious, but well, again, we'll go through the clip. We think we've got some good programming. Robin and I will regenerate. We will recharge. Robin and I, not me, Fred, not Gary, not anybody else on the show, just him and Robin, right? We already have some big uh, shows planned for you in September, but um, <laughs> anyway, that is a scheduling note when we are renewed with Sirius. To tell us what some of these shows are. That uh, uh, Let's just say to, what? there'll be a couple of major concerts when we come back, when I say in the morning with us, and uh, a couple oh. of major guests, also... Um, couple a couple of concerts and a couple of guests <laughs> yeah doesn't name a single goddamn one of them if you're Not still alive one. if you're still alive in september yeah we'll, yeah, we'll be here with this <laughs> oh boy <laughs> um a couple of uh well you'll see you'll have to tune in you'll have to tune in but let's just put it that way this is like that fucking nebulous story he told about being offered to be to buy the playboy mansion and the, the playboy like the, the the thing and he never came up with the story it never re- reared its head <laughs> <laughs> okay I think maybe i could tell you tomorrow can i tell you oh let me i think i ask ralph maybe because ralph is the fucking expediter of your empire my ass <laughs> but um how am i gonna get uh get used to days without that awesome hmm. <laughs> anyway uh Yes, part of the uh, new schedule with our contract was to take a break in the summer. Do you hear all those fucking pauses? Yes, and do you hear how flat he is? No yeah. excitement. None. He he is hating every single fucking moment of this announcement. He can't get through it fast enough, and it's only five minutes. And then they don't bring it up the rest of the show, hardly. Okay. They, they might reference the... Um, Bowie and Hines stuff, they might do like an, a slight advertisement for that. But right. this is pretty much all we got. It was right off the bat. And then it was just into the rest of the show. So real quick, your your contention is that it, it this is pla- pre-planned, like it's in, the, it's in the contract. He's going to be off no matter what. Or is it something on the fly that Sirius have decided we're just going to take the hit and, and cancel you for the next little while while we figure out what we can do. That means they're going to cancel him before the the end of the summer, but they just don't want to say it. I think there are plans, like I said, to squeeze or shrink him, his presence on the channels. Minimize his, uh, his whatever time, whatever his, uh, his, his presence there. It's almost like a passive aggressive slap to the dick, right? (laughs) So he, he's taking this because he has no choice. He couldn't, get a better negotiation from Buckwalt. This it was mm-hmm. like this or nothing. Yes. And they're they're phasing him out. They're going to still keep him, but I think each year in this 5-year contract is mm-hmm. going to be less and less till he's finally mm-hmm. earning like 5 million a year. So you're weaning people off the tip. Exactly. Great okay. metaphor. See what's he going to do? You you said the perfect the perfect thing. What the fuck is he going to do for two months not being able to get on mic? Oh, hey, hey. well, it's perfect opportunity for plastic surgery (laughs) or wig uh, wig maintenance, (laughs) wig renovations. Correct. (laughs) Try out some new styles. Perhaps we might get the Louis 14th back again. Hold hold on, Matthew Schultz. I got it again. Can we get some scaffolding put around his wig? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and make it like the you know the, the way the Statue of Liberty was in the mid eighties. <laughs> People oh, taking selfies it. in front of it with nothing but pipes. <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway, sorry, I cut you off, please. Oh, that's all right. Um, yeah. So I mentioned plastic surgery. I mentioned the sure. wig renovations, or begin his transitioning into. Um... <laughs> what was it, Holly? <laughs> what was it, Holly? Thank you, Hollywood Holly. And uh, Holly Stern. I I just. I know he's going to be watching a lot of these trans videos, so maybe he's got it in his head. He's going to start hormone therapy. He's been seeing a lot of doctors. He's had his blood work done. Maybe. Oh, this was the other. The fourth thing I thought of cataract surgery. 
He can't see his mm. toenails, Fillmore, to cut them. He can't cut his own toenails. He claims that Beth cuts his toenails. Oh now, if God. you can just imagine that like gargoyle bent over trying to see his, <laughs> his toenails that are like he's hobbit he's already, feet. He's already shaped like a semicolon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, I imagine she just fucking takes a like a, a Ginsu knife and just has at his toes and says, oh, fuck, if you, you're not going to miss a toe anyway, you can't walk already as it is. Yep. I kind of picture like a, um, a, a manicurist or a pedicurist coming into the house in a hazmat suit, having yeah. to cut his his fingernails or his toenails. Sorry. Yeah. That, you know, even Beth is like, you don't pay me enough for this. I can't. <laughs> but he makes up stories about her giving him pedicures. So. Yeah. God bless her if she is, but not really because I don't give a shit about her. So but, those are my ideas for his summer vacation and what he'll be doing. <laughs> I've never seen I've never seen a Clydesdale operate a chainsaw. Um, I think <laughs> with that fucking fungal foot of his, geez, I wouldn't even I, I just as soon boil my head and dunk my head in fucking sulfuric acid. Um, so we'll continue with the clip. And, and I, I got a lot of things to say about this one, because, again, it's it's I hate to be so. I mean, some the one common criticism of the show is that we're too conspiratorial, too hate, like it's hate based. I'm like, like you can't, you can't, you know, you can't. It's too negative. What the fuck? It's a, it's an anti stern podcast. What do you think we're gonna be like? Hey guys, yeah, yeah. It's time do you to not be know cheerful. what you? Do you know what you signed up for? <laughs> this is the 4-H club, and so we'll be doing <laughs> that. And I will jerk off and drive Beth crazy. I mean, that will be my goal. Uh, what else did I want to tell you? Oh, yes. This is, um, tell you some of the things that you're going to hear over the summer. I want to say that. Drink. Um, of course, uh, we're going to start the weekend with the Bowie 100, which we always do. It's all been updated, all Baba Bowie songs all the time. It's going to kick off your summer. Who, gif- who gives a fuck? A Bowie song was like, a 15, 20, maybe 30 second thing when you'd have Bowie come in. You never hear about him. So what do you give a fuck about these songs that you've heard a million times before? And this has all been played in years past. So there's no new work done on this. It's just pulling something off the shelf, plugging it in and hitting play. Right. That's it. Right. We're going to like, why don't you have the best of Mike Walker or something? (laughs) Anything would be better. Um, Howard 101 will play uh, close to 200 interviews, conversations. Howard 101 is the party channel where it's everything else that we do. Uh, John, Gary, and Rasan will host two shows every day. The pre-interview show. There's a summer school show. Um, a couple of programming notes. Friday, July 9th, Weezer, Fall Out Boy, and Green Day will uh, have given us a concert from the Whiskey in L.A. right before covid Jesus, let me get let me get the kids in the car for that one. Fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on for a sec. And so we have a whole bunch of things happening. You want more? Yeah. Um, sure. Friday, July sixteenth. Sure. Danny Trejo is taking over. He's one of our favorite guests. Oh, I love Danny. When's the last time Danny Trejo was on the fucking show? Bueller? It's gotta be a decade, <laughs> at least. <laughs> it makes I can't it sound remember. Like he's Mark Harris. <laughs> Danny Trejo. Yes. Uh, Brandy Carlisle, Friday, July 23rd, is going to record a special concert just for us. Uh, to, uh, for, not for you, for serious. Like he says us, but he's not talking about the show. He's talking about the, the Sirius XM. Yeah, like a fishbowl kind of thing. Yep. Or she's going to so, go yeah. do it somewhere with Sirius sponsoring it, getting money Jeez. from them. Aid. Love, lovely. He's um, uh, Friday, July 30th. will uh, debut a new show, Gay Straight. And who knows? Ronnie, Ralph and Chris Wilde will answer <laughs> sex questions. So get Are you maybe kidding? we got to call. We got to call into that one. Everybody. Yeah. Please Bombard do. it. <laughs> I know I shouldn't be telegraphing my punches, but I'd love to be able to call in. Just say, Chris, you're a disgrace to Canada. Uh, my name is Bruce. And uh, I, I just I just I just don't believe it. You're 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 undermining the entire gay community. And uh, I, I'm appalled. Get those ready. It's going to be a very big show. Ice-T is going to be pl- doing a best of show. Some of his favorite shows from the past. Wow. Cheap Trick has given us their 2018 concert from the Cavern Club in Liverpool featuring Beatles songs, and they do them. So- oh, God, covers. Uh. <laughs> like the Fab Faux. Remember them? I mean, it was technically impressive, but who gives a shit? 
this was three years ago. Nobody's asking for this shit, but he's just piling it on. Yeah. What the fuck? This is what we have in store for you. Jesus Christ. What he's basically saying is find other podcasts to listen to because this one's going on hiatus and no one gives a shit. Oh, well. Seriously, see you in September. I am not tuning in for any of this garbage. Give me a break. Jesus, I'm the, the cheap trick thing, man. I gotta, I'm going to reschedule my, my, uh, <laughs> my cancer treatments and, <laughs> and i got to listen to this sort of live. Oh. Um, also, Friday, August 20th, Dana Carvey's going to take over and bring you some favorite moments from the show. Amazing. Uh, Friday, August 27th, a big special with um, Medicated Pete called the Big Dick Energy with Medicated Pete. Everyone knows about uh, Pete's um, big penis. Massive this will be a, penis. Yeah. yeah. People, any, any sub existing subscriber is not pissed off that he's taken two months off. It's that this is what they've got planned. This is what they have. Yep. This is the sloppy garbage that we're getting. They're their whatever crap they could come up with as filler mm -hmm. over the summer. This is all mm -hmm. we get. Horrific. <laughs> Friday, September 3rd, Metallica uh, will be um, featured. Their 1992 Cincinnati concert from their Black Album tour. What the f Okay, this is, oh, by the way, before you cut in, they made a rem remastered version of the Black Album. They released, re released it recently, and it's Four CDs of cover versions of Black Album songs <laughs> <laughs> and the Black Album. Who the fuck is buying this? No one gives a shit if, you know, Motion, C Mo Motion City soundtrack or whatever, or like fucking, I don't know, like, uh, like uh, fucking Veruca Assault is actually doing a cover of the Black Album, one, like a, one of the songs, like <laughs> Unforgiven. No one gives a shit. Metallica are some of the biggest sellouts, and Huge. even their true fans have revolted on them. Oh yeah, they, like new ki young kids aren't even into them. Like teenagers right now, I'm pretty much got my finger on the pulse of what kids are listening to. Sure, and it's not Metallica. Trust me. No, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, anybody over sixty or fifty-five might be into this, but we're in our forties, and we're not. We're not buying this. And uh, and then, of course, on Labor Day weekend, right uh, before the end of the break, phony phonathon is going to happen again where uh, you will vote. You will vote. We will once again select the best phony phone call. The best phony phone calls. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just salivating with anticipation. As, as uh, one of my, my sister-in-law says, my peaches are dripping. Um <laughs> The, this <laughs> that's the that was the one this was on monday the yeah wait that was monday's first five minutes of the show pretty much he launched right into that way to sell it wiggy way to sell it <laughs> okay so then on the uh the follow-up is the let's see hold on let me see if i got this right the 30th <sighs> yeah well, i don't know why i wrote down june 14th in all those clips um, that's because that's the Andy Cohen interview. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's uh, the follow up is the Tuesday. And no, Wednesday. Wednesday. Sorry, my mistake. And this is <laughs> what he had to say okay. following <laughs> the response. Uh, uh, hey now, everybody. Hey, excitement, hey. excitement, excitement in the air for today's show. Everybody loves it. Many fans have written me. They do not. <laughs> oh, really? Many fans have written me. <laughs> Listen, I have a wax seal. I put it in a part piece of parchment paper. I cover. I sealed it. I got my initials on it. I sent it via carrier pigeon. I sent smoke signals uh, over to Chimney Manor. Uh, <laughs> I, I am. I am protesting this. I'm. <laughs> I'm listening under protest, Raven. Oh my god. Yeah, he got so many emails. No, he got a lot of feedback on Facebook and Twitter and Reddit. People hate this shit. They are furious with him. They want their money back. They're thinking of canceling forever. Our membership has never been at a higher rate than in this past three days, four days, sorry, that he had made this announcement. Our membership is shot up. I would love to know the percentage of increase of people trying to get into our site. 
because they're so freaking angry with him. It's daily, and what I don't understand is like, what well, we first of all, we do a bad job of, of plugging the show because I don't. There's a whole lot of there. You have to. The minute I plug on one of those Facebook groups, it's a bunch of like assholes. I have to fend off going like, "Oh, fuck you! You don't like this." I'm like, "Okay, great, whatever." Uh, but for those of you who are really fed up with the fucking show, you know. Also, thanks to Jeremy Shepard for plugging us on the Superfan Stern Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Because I believe we got a lot of people that said they found it there and came mm-hmm. to us. Yeah. And they're so happy to have us because they were not welcomed on the Superfan Stern page. So <laughs> Where anything we goes. Have, <laughs> yeah, anything goes, right. One, another page that got a, listen, got a uh, contributor banned for a month because they put up something of beef and a horse said twinning. And honestly... If anything goes, what the fuck? Why are you, why are you banning people? So, that there you go. Wow, it's all good news for us. We get a little yep. vacation. We get caught up on breakdowns. We get to dive into Colford. This mm-hmm. couldn't be better. And honestly, I hope it happens in November and December too. We are taking a summer break. They don't like the change in schedule. I only take that as a compliment. People want me with them all the time. But uh, with peace and love, you know, by the way, do you know what that really sounded like right then? And, and, and with the, you know, would you add it with the article, that, uh, the articles that have come out, but there are a lot of like shitty fly by night website, you know, bullshit blasts, you know, they just repeat the same article. They just reprint it. It is. It just, it sounds like uh, someone who's completely delusional needing this affirmation to go on their own and click on their own name on Google and find that these things are there. And once you see them, it's like you have your blanket. You can keep sucking your thumb. You're still relevant. And you, you know, you, you're, you're still, you still matter in the world. It's totally his MPD kicking in. Mm -hmm. You know, one angry person on Reddit posts something and he thinks, holy fuck, everybody loves me. They can't go a summer without me. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to take this and run to Jennifer Witz and be like, see, I told you, they mm-hmm. want me. People love me. Yeah. No. My friend called me. He goes, why are you guys going to be gone this summer? I said, <laughs> which friend? <laughs> <laughs> Himself. I said, the truth be told, when I did my contract, I, I told them I want to. Well, first I told them I'm leaving. <laughs> he's tripping over his own shoes i love it yeah it is great i'm gonna be (laughs) totally transparent i said i think i'm i'm done with my radio career i think i need more time off they said well what would you do instead of doing 112 shows a year if you did 100 shows a year and that would work out that you could take the summer off i said well that might be interesting might be interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw back to um, second contract renegotiation. Uh, Dan from Illinois calls in and starts he starts arguing semantics. He goes, "I didn't get a pay cut. I'm making the same money, but I'm working fewer hours. If you're making less money in 2010 than you made in 2009, you got a pay cut. Doesn't matter how many fucking hours you worked. You're talking about your total for the year." So you can spin it any way you like. To, they can name it, help have you save face because I used to be getting, I'm still getting, you know, 50 bucks an hour, but I'm working two hours a week. <laughs> so. Right. His rate might be the same, but his overall gross is substantially lower. Right. And also, don't you find it interesting that in the past two contracts before this one, mm-hmm. in um, 2010, 2015, he always made it sound like, oh, I'm done. He talked it all up like, you, they're not going to get me back. I, I'm, I think I'm out. You guys got to start looking for other jobs. This year, he didn't do that. This was the one year out of the past three contracts he didn't threaten us with leaving. Mm-hmm. He didn't mention it at all, mm-hmm. in fact, which leads me to believe that it's legit. They were squeezing him out and mm-hmm. reducing his pay, reducing his time on the air, and looking for other outlets for content besides mm-hmm. Howard. Right. And the fact that Jennifer Ritz took over at a weird time, like at the end of his contract, 
um, mm-hmm. indicates a couple of things. Number one, that they just Jim Meyer didn't want to fucking deal with him. Didn't want to have maybe didn't have the balls to say like I'm not I'm not resigning him. You deal with it. But also, she could be afford to be the the person coming in with the new relationship that doesn't st- have to start off from like a uh, it's it's not a friendship based thing. It's I'm going to be business and you suck and you're fucking you're driving listeners away. What few ones you have left? We know the fucking numbers. You don't have a leg to stand on. You have no other options. NBC doesn't want you. You're too fucking cheap and lazy to do your own fucking podcast because you know the numbers would make you fucking crawl into the fetal position and sip fucking Gatorade <laughs> and and all and eat almonds, anything you know what you could to you know uh, to placate yourself. And and um, the idea that um, if there was, it would, it, they'd need more time than was given in the contract. Like if he's out of contract, that's a problem. So you sign him to this bullshit sort of cheapo contract. And in that time, in the interim, COVID or not, you're t- making moves in like while he's on the job to try to do exactly what you said, phase him out, find other talent and gauge, gauge interest as Adam Carolla called it <laughs> in other people who'd like to step in his shoes and take some of his hours. He no longer had Jim Meyer or Scott Greenstein to defend him as, nope. you know, semi business friends right. that they had been in the past. And this Jennifer Witz, which is great because he hates women. And yes. this woman comes in, lays down the law and is like, no, this is the bottom line. This is what we'll offer you. Take it or leave it. And mm-hmm. with his tail between his legs and Buckwald unable to help, maybe even in full right. Stages of senility at this point. Who knows? Yeah, and couldn't retirement. Find, couldn't find a way around it. And mm-hmm. this this guy is just bitter. And that's why we had the fake Jennifer Witz for the mm-hmm. first half of the year. Yeah. I can't wait to hear what he's going to do with Jennifer Witz when he comes back in September. Right. After having two months to stew on it of why he's sitting in a, you know, King Baby's in, put in a corner in time out right now mm-hmm. for two months with no voice. Now, I'm curious if he amps up his Twitter, if he tries to, you know, come on, even even though in the past he said he needs Sirius to hook him up to broadcast from his home. Uh-huh. I don't know that I buy that. And he might pop in, you know, and try and make the news, yeah. you know, with, with like an emergency broadcast because someone died or <laughs> something happened or who knows. Right. Or he might pop up, try to pop up on like a... Uh... Kimmel via Zoom or something like that, or make an appearance, try to make an appearance somewhere to make it, hey, guys, I'm still alive. <laughs> hey, I'm not, I'm not dead. Um, I think there's that. And there's also, like, the thing is, again, what is he going to do if he doesn't have that outlet? He's going to go nuts. He's just going to go, like, you know, uh, and he must, you're right, he must be furious, but we're going to get the real story later on because he's too stupid to keep it to himself. And he's right. too immature and NPD. So the Jennifer Witz stuff is going to be, again, it's going to be surrogate bashing. It's going to be cunt, 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 fuck her and fuck all women for fucking doing this to me. Who the fuck do you think you are? I'm the fucking king of all media. <laughs> he's not even the king uh, of any media. At this point, he's not even the king of his own house. No. <laughs> the answer king. Um, and uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Uh, and then we came up with this plan to keep me on the air. So, um, anyway, that's how it came about. Because someone was saying, well, whoa, 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 you're going to be... I said, well, it's only 12, 12 shows you're missing. So, but a lot was made of it. But what can I tell you? You know, I've been doing this my whole life. How many years am I broadcasting? 40 or 50 years or something crazy? Like, maybe 45, somewhere in there. 40. Now, okay, here's here's the other thing. He's right. Like if it's it's if it's just a ploy to get attention, okay, then he's got it. And there you go, Wig. And he does. The reason why he doesn't fuck with us is because he loves that we have a show about him. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Right. I know Bob thinks otherwise. He thinks oh, he doesn't listen, or he has someone else. I think when he's alone, he puts us on. Why? Well, it's just my just my thought. It's just my opinion. That's all. Um, and because it's negative, positive, it's still attention. It's still, it's still in his fucking demented mind shows him that he's relevant. Exactly. We keep him relevant. Yep. You're welcome, Wiggy. <laughs> <laughs> you can send us some Poland spring bottles. It'd be great. Five years, I said. <laughs> I think it's time for me to go. And they go, don't. Don't hang Did it up. people forget you were here and, and not ask you to <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, I, I said, listen, guys, I love being here, but, uh, you know, I see <laughs> we're here at home. <laughs> Your Honor, I object. Yeah. Objection. Sustained. <laughs> <laughs> the hourglass turned upside down and the sand is running out. <laughs> And uh, no, so it's I thought this like was a. Ronnie now. How long yeah, do I have well, up? I know how Ronnie feels. You know, my father loved work, and he retired at 57. Uh, he, it was a forced retirement. He didn't want to retire. Uh, this always. Big old projection there. Forced mm -hmm. retirement. That's what's happening to him. You think? You Why think that's exactly what it this is? Up? I, I'm pretty sure, but it's it's a gradual thing. They're like I said, yeah, it, it's it's a whole like five year plan. Yeah, from Jennifer Witz. Thank you, Jennifer Witz. Yeah, it's tendril by tendril, and so that that it, it also gives more. I don't remember exactly which episode of our breakdowns, but the Tom Morello. It's pretty fairly recent. The Tom Morello interview, which was so contentious, and I still I love the fact that he had to drag yeah. plugs out of him and keep him on. Uh, on topic and wig was just i'm not plugging i'm not plugging i'm not plugging and that was a passive aggressive wiggy going fuck this i'm not going quietly into the into the light he could see it <laughs> sorry into that good night yeah yeah so it's a slow motion fucking car wreck like final destination and he's just he's seeing it before it happens. <laughs> i love that analogy <laughs> sorry guys stay with me my my dad loved to go get up and go to work tremendous work ethic is you know, all of us Stearns have. Well, not all, but some. <laughs> oh, really? So, uh, you inherited that. <laughs> yes, I inherited tremendous work ethic. And I, you know, mm -hmm. there were career I was doing a radio show, a TV show, television specials. Don't ask. I mean, <laughs> I love this. Later on, there's a clip where he's going to talk about my office. All of this is my office. All I would do is sleep in there. <laughs> For years, he said, I go to the meditate. <laughs> Meditate. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Saints Christ. Yeah, you name it. Live performing. You transcendental, transcendental coma. Like <laughs> <laughs> Cinderella's got to get his beauty coma to, to get through the rest of the day. You know, it's been a very busy career. Put a uh, microphone a there. You'll show up. AGT. You know, I'm doing AGT Movie. and the radio show. Movies, don't ask. You forget I mean, that, I mean, writing books. Yeah. Well, I've always been a very busy boy. <laughs> okay. Okay, again, he's got problem with singular and plural. He said oh, movies. Yeah. Movies. It's just movie. It's movie, that's, that's it. right. Right. And if you guys want, there's a clip I'll play later on another time, not today, where he talks about how, you know, first of all, he's like, oh, Private Parts was a huge hit. But then he goes into, well... This caller asked, when are you going to do another movie? And he goes, well, when you, the movie only does so well, you get this kind of script. And then you get this kind of script. Basically, they want him to be the lead. And I love that Betty Thomas told him, you'd be great for my next part. And he went and promoted it. It's like he didn't know it was a voice part. Oh. <laughs> she wanted him to be the chipmunk or the squirrel for Dr. Doolittle. And he's like, I'm going to be working with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, <love it. laughs> Uh, I did say to Sirius, look, um, I don't know. I don't know what my life is right now. I'm trying to figure it out. Beth said to me, don't you want to stay on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even radio. Even he knows it's not radio. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to stay on the radio? <laughs> He doesn't even know what his life is now. Right. What right. kind of vague statement is that? Yeah, He's vague such booking. A bullshitter. Exactly. I said I do want to stay on the radio. I do like doing the radio show, but so anyway, I sat down after a long, <laughs> um, tedious <laughs> discussion about my. <laughs> it is tedious. Future. Tell me with, about it. With serious. Oh. And, and you know, mostly with Jim. Um, you know, Jim was the CEO back then. Now Jennifer Witz is the CEO, who I had a long conversation with the other day, actually. Oh, okay. He's so he's making it. Jim is still on the board as some kind of Jim Meyer is still the um, 
some kind of I don't know. He's an ear. I guess he's a mouthpiece. Chair, like, at, chairperson or uh, may, maybe like honorary chairperson because he's not retired, so he's just he's old enough to to be close to retirement. But they still he still has input. Board of trustee, one of those dumb executive titles. I don't know. Right. Or they're leaving him in to just be Howard's go-between. Like, oh, you know, yeah, like a mediator. A mediator, right. yeah, as he's getting phased out. Like, look, just keep him on, and you deal with him, and uh, I'll, I'll deal with day- Jennifer Ritz. I'll deal with day-to-day shit, but I just want you you stick around for to handle these fucking babies wrapped in cotton, uh, like wig, and uh, so I don't have to have any interaction, except very minimally, you know, like the less the better. Right, but he said he talked to her, so let's hear what he said to her. Yep. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very bright woman, very nice woman. We had a great conversation. And, uh, I'm very excited about her ideas. And I gave her a bunch. Of, and, I, and we had a discussion about the future of satellite radio and, and, Flora and Stitcher. And I have a you lot of You gave her information on all the companies. Actually, I had spent a lot of time thinking about it. And, uh, yeah, I, I did. I, I really... You know, I, I, I'll tell you what I told Jennifer. I said, the future is dead, by the way, for fucking it's Sirius XM. Like, when, I mean, we should really have, like, some kind of countdown to when they're going to collapse. Because it, it's due. I mean, not just at coming out of a pandemic, but people out of the pandemic. And if you cut the fucking cord to Sirius XM, because that's a subscription you don't want to waste money on when you're out of work. Or you're, you know, like, your job's cutting back. Or you're on reduced hours something like that and you go if one of the first things you do is you get rid of your fucking subscription to this to that and you just yep you know you keep your internet maybe and then you just start discovering podcasts welcome all, all the new listeners by the way um so and then so and you realize oh we don't need stern and that's how it happens and that's how it happened for most of us i remember when Artie left i started a, a, like a mad tear to find every other fucking podcast there was even before then so that's probably one of his biggest fears is that people are going to find other interests over these two months, Big 10 time. weeks, mm-hmm. and, not, and, and find how entertained they are by, I don't know, Jason Bateman out there in California doing a podcast or whoever. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he's going to lose even more. Not just the people who quit for this one summer break, mm-hmm. but he's going to lose more in the big picture. So... I think Sirius is counting on that. They yep. know. They yep. know how this stuff works. They're they're no dummies. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's it's just the begin it's the beginning of the end and we have documented it all along the way. Yep. You're welcome everybody. You also think that the two months is for them to to crunch the numbers in a, in such a like a linear fashion to go, okay, here were his, this was his listenership in in May and June. Now let's compare it to July and August when he's not on and people are just – because they have a way of tracking the numbers. If they didn't, they couldn't bill properly. They couldn't sell ads. They couldn't, um, um, they couldn't figure out whether or not he's worth keeping on right. some level. So this is, I think, their, their way of discussing like the numbers. Like when he's gone, no one's paying attention to your fucking channels. And when he is there, there's so little. Yep. And then by the time September and October is done, they can measure those numbers versus May and June. Yep, and absolutely. see what he had before and after, and mm-hmm. see the big drop off the cliff. That's right, and then maybe goodbye, Bowie, goodbye, Rasan, goodbye, Wilding. Oh, you're back to go. You're sending. We're sending you back to fucking Alberta, dude. And then wherever else, uh, you know, like uh, people come from, and they're gonna have to be looking for other work because it's just it's a big a white. The whole show's a white elephant at that point. Whoever's getting paid, uh, still by Stern and what have you. So, Jennifer, I I am a a failure at most things in life. I don't know about anything. But one thing I know about is radio. <clears throat> For some reason, I've always been correct in my career. You're a <laughs> savant I, in radio. Yes, I'm a savant. I'm an idiot savant <laughs> with an extra <laughs> emphasis on the idiot. Yes, I mean I, I left mo- out the idiot. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> Sirius is leaving out the idiot too. It looks like it really is. Yeah. Um, it's really uncanny, you know. I go back all the way to my days at K Rock when I would sit there with arguing, arguing about. Okay, that's the end of that clip. Uh, Thank sorry God. to leave it on. What? Sorry to leave it on a on a cliff, guys. Um, but then we go into June fourteenth, 
which is Andy Cohen standing over the goblin's corpse. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so a- Andy's basically trying to angle his way into Stern's spot, and I don't. I read a somewhere somewhere the one of the articles just stated that Andy basically has no listenership, and that if he takes over Stern's. He'll double his, his, like double all five of his listeners to 10 or something like that. Um, either way, let's hear what he's got to say. He wants to. <laughs> he seemed obsessed with me not being there. And he wondered if I would ever come back to the Sirius XM building and call dibs on my studio. I, I mean, it's like he oh, was like standing over a, a race to be the one who takes the studio. It's like they're standing over my corpse. <laughs> Howard will never step foot in this building again, maybe. <laughs> I wonder if Howard will ever come back. Let me ask you this. If Howard doesn't ever come back to this studio. Okay, I have to stop it there. Something yeah. in Andy's voice suggests that he knows he's not coming back because he knows mm-hmm. something internally. So he knew he knew then what we are finding out now or we what we presume. Yeah, this clip is something they played on the 14th, but it was from the previous week when Andy returned to studio. Yes. And he was gazing in at the Howard Stern compound, and he wanted so badly to go inside. And someone had a a fob, like a door, a plastic card swipe that could let him in. But he knew he'd get himself in trouble or fired or whatever, Mm -hmm. and he'd never be back on Stern if he did. But his voice is so giddy about mm-hmm. wanting to just like fish around in there or uh, sit in his chair or see what he could come up, like just see the space. You know he was imagining his own group of people coming into there yep. and how he could set things up for himself, what he could transform it into, all the possibilities. And right. I'm pretty sure Sirius has put it over top of his head that like they're they're dangling and teasing Andy with this could all be yours someday, you know, mm-hmm. if you play your cards right and you stick with us and you and you work and you work cheaply enough. <laughs> you do what we say. The payoff yeah. will be in the end. We just got to we got to be patient and squeeze this guy out over the next five, four and a half years now. So, yeah. And so, and yeah, that's that sounds in, in line with it, because the fact is. And I, I've always had this feeling of Andy that he's just a complete cockroach. And that's not just about him being, I don't know, a, a, like a, just a loose asshole. It's more like, it's more about his general like lack of likability to me. And mm-hmm. is, is he seems like he'd do, he'd fuck his, he'd crawl over his dead mother to fuck his sister, that kind of thing. And so he has no loyalty to anybody. He really just a social climber and he doesn't, he might be a fan of Howard in the past or whatever, but he, he, there's no reason he's tweaking Howard, except he doesn't like him. He wants to fucking really like take over his, his, his thing. And he's about getting one over on Howard. He's always been tweaking him for, since I can remember, he's been up at Howard's ass and the comma thing. Remember (laughs) the the note that was deliberate. That was, that wasn't done by accident. Yeah. That was the John Mayer note. Yeah, he, he grilled him on. Andy is a creep. I will give you that. He is a wonky-eyed, lispy creep who will step on his own mother's grave just to get a job, mm-hmm. just to climb the ladder. He will do yeah. whatever it takes. I guarantee right. it. I, I'm not a fan of him at all. He he really disturbs me. But yeah. it's kind of you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So right. I am watching this closely to see how he does stuff. And Howard brings him up a lot with the housewives. Yep. You know, he gives him plugs. So there's mm-hmm. something going on there. But right. we know Howard attracts creeps in his life anyway. So it's there, true. Enough. There's a whole lot more of Andy to, to go yet. So let's that's, see what we got. That, that's right. And also keep in mind, guys, if there is, there is, there, there's still a chance Andy gets me too between now and whenever, whenever, basically. And Howard survives that as well. So we're keeping it, we're just keeping it in play. So you guys understand. And this isn't uh, strictly fuck him, fuck him. We're using whatever we can to get at wig. It's more like, no, we understand Andy has some kind of value in the, in, in the entertainment industry where people will sit down and talk with him where they won't with Howard. And that's the kind of the, where Sirius would be going if it happens. To this building, who gets this studio? 
I will move back I to know. do that with you in there. Really? I will move back to New York. I will fly there every I think twice we should a week. Put Jeff Lewis live in there. We should. I want huh. dibs on Howard's studio if he never comes back. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk to Scott Greenstein about that after the show. Jeez. By the way, his co-host is John Hill, who is Andy's ex-boyfriend. So they've actually fucked. What, what and what's the point of mentioning that? Go ahead. Devalue and degrade. MPD yes. going strong. Yeah. Right. He fucks him. He fucks that guy in the ass. Those two guys. Oh. So I don't know what the, the whole story is there, but Andy, uh, I guess, threw a bone, no pun intended, to his ex lover and uh, gave him a job on the show. But so uh, anyway. He's, he's moved out of New York. He would. Wig sounds pissed as fuck. You can tell it's, sim- it's a simmering. Yeah, he's trying to discredit Andy any way possible and passive yep. aggressiveness because he knows he's going to eventually talk to Andy on the phone. Yep. Oh, yeah. And this will all come up because he's going to roast Andy for mm-hmm. what he said and threaten his job and his money and his life. So mm-hmm. we'll we'll see. We'll move back, he said. Yeah. <laughs> Andy said he wanted to fish around my compound. Are there any other... Is there any other Sirius XM people here? Is Sway here today? No. Only me. Wow. Is there anything I could steal from any? Is- <laughs> He's like Shuli in the Hurricane Sandy thing sitting in the arty chair. <laughs> I hope I can get this gig. <laughs> yeah, please. Well, Andy's pumping himself up. He's like, look yeah. at me. I'm the first one back. Yep. I'm so important. He's he's totally MPDing himself right there. Yep. Yep. Or Maybe not as an extreme as Howard does, but Andy definitely knows what he's doing. And he mm-hmm. filmed this all on his Instagram and posted it. Wow. So that's how Howard found all this. Mm-hmm. Howard's area open? Could I go in there and take something? No? No, it's not. Oh, Robin, call the FBI immediately. <laughs> Can't someone let me in? What would I do? I just want to fish around. Ooh, oh, these guys are showing me they have access with their their fobs work. I would love to just go in there and just fish around. Ooh, you see what I mean? It got like, oh, I just want to go in there and fish around. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> what he's going to find, like the megaphone with some mold on it and shit. <laughs> God, it's fucking no, excruciating. It sounds like that place has been cleaned out anyway of all stuff that's important and shipped to uh, Howard Studios and his mansions. Yeah. nothing, Nothing's really there. And we'll find out later his office is empty. Mm-hmm. All there is is a couch to lay on for yeah. nap time. <laughs> Meditating. Like, what what do you think there? he's going to find in there? Just to fuck with him, I might actually take over his studio. Now I'll have two studios and I'll. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be in a hall somewhere. Yeah. And then the other weird. I mean, I got to admit he's, it. He's not, even, pers- he's, he's not even using his own. So we're going to go right into studio talk, which is the next clip. And yeah. uh, there's a progression. Is my studio really that great? I mean, there, there is a lot of space. It is big. But, you know, I, I custom designed that for our show because. Devaluing the studio now? Uh, no, he's kind of talking up like how big it is and how he designed it a certain way. He He's making it, you know, seem super valuable. But why the hell aren't you back there yet? Exactly. If it's so important to you. Mm hmm. You know, we needed a space for bands. We needed a space for staff. Robin needed a news booth. You know, we needed we had needs. So we designed the ultimate studio. So I understand, you know, Andy's fascination with it. But on the other hand, it's just a bunch of microphones. But then he'll go in there in that big. (laughs) Okay, they they designed the present design of the studio. It looks like one of those fucking isolation tanks where you go in and you can't. There's no light. There's no anything. (laughs) It just looks like when you expect your corpse to be embalmed and thrown into this fucking mausoleum, he has a mausoleum at home. He's got one at the studio and they really do look it. I love the old, the older look with the little fake flames and stuff. At least it was a little busier. There was something going on. Now it looks like some fucking crypt keepers, you know, uh, looks like the Adams family, (laughs) like living room. Honestly, that studio has never been more of a morgue than it is now. (laughs) The, the news, the news is gone. So we don't need that. And with Robin's conditions, 
she's not coming back. No way. She's too high risk with her immunity. Yeah. And we all know Wiggy has said he's never coming back, except maybe for like a special musical a performance, yeah. a day or two here and there. Right. Do you really think Sirius is going to upkeep that with the rent that they're paying on that space when they could be using it for so many other things? We're selling it even like is selling a portion of the fucking office space, the, the space and say, fuck it, we'll retool it and give it to someone else. If anybody wants to buy it. Yeah, fine. Fuck it. Basically, it'll be him and that guy. No, God knows what <laughs> they don't need there. that room. No. <laughs> for drink. I wonder if it's weird for him. Drink. To, like, <laughs> he used to fuck that guy. And now. Now, like they. They. I guess they're still friends. I guess he has nothing to say. He does. It's nothing of value. It's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing intrinsically important. What he's having to say there. We'll continue with studio and staff talk, which is interesting. Really, our studio is kind of convoluted. We have like 40 people and staff all crammed together. And I have this big, spacious studio. So it's <laughs> right, like, right. The studio is bigger than anything else. Yeah. It's like that Twilight Zone episode. Remember where? So he's like, uh, he's got them. He's got them in a warehouse. And uh, he himself has all this space because, you know, he needs a lot of space. <laughs> it's like an Indian call center. Basically. Where you've got like 50 people in like uh, two by four booths. Yep. Just cubicles. answering calls. Yeah. With a little computer typing up, you know, fake emails, yep. calling in with their fake calls. And all the money that he used to get from Sirius to redo the studio, that's got to be gone, too. Completely. I have to believe. Like, the way yep. they're downsizing him. Yep. It's inevitable. Yep. Uh, number 14. Uh, sorry, no, next clip. Return to studio. Andy's right, though. I don't know if I'm ever setting foot again in there. I think we will. I think eventually we'll go back there for a couple well, of Well, I know at least. that's an awful lot of space, though. Yeah. To sit idle most. Which is it? You're never going back, or you might go back for a couple days. Right. Get your fucking story straight, Wicked he's, he's such a He's such a horrible bullshitter. I mean, you, you, like the best bullshitters, there's a grain of truth somewhere in the bullshit. And um, in this case, particularly, he. It's almost like he can't, he, he, again, he can't get out of his own way when he does lie. But when he talks about not wanting to come back, it's funny. It's like almost everything else in his life. When he didn't want to originally film the show, then he started filming the show and realized he could get something out of it and not really do any work because it was already just recorded. Boom, we have the audio. Now we have the video. But he was adamant that they wouldn't get filmed and then, until it happened. So he's never first to a good idea. He's always like dragged, kicking and screaming into some kind of thing. Maybe you can record from home. ISDN, no, I got to see the guest. Well, maybe not. Yes, that was my next example was he didn't want to record people over the computer in interviews. Yeah, right. And, well, that changed too. Yeah. So. Yeah. And even before COVID, guys, it was totally possible and it still was being done by shitloads of people. That's true. Time, I was thinking about that. I think Sirius XM realized that the, the, during the pandemic, quite frankly, that they well, don't need to be paying all that rent. They don't even need that space. <laughs> no. I mean, they probably need some offices and maybe some broadcast facilities, but nothing to that extent. People are, are perfectly uh, doing wonderfully remotely. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Cost cutting. So who knows but, what's you know, happening? Do you think they'll go back to... You know, live performances in the fishbowl. Probably. Stuff like that. At some point. You know. Drink. At some point. Yep. I keep hearing people talk about how in offices, people need to just run into each other. Well, there's, by the way, there's, they, they, serious, how much, do you, how much money do you think they're fucking hemorrhaging from that big white elephant studio? Not oh, being not used. Yeah, I'm not good with real estate and numbers, but it's got to be like tens of millions. It just yeah, it, in in oh, un, like I, yeah, I don't know. I, there I'm are no really returns. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number fourteen. Sorry, next. I keep thinking fourteen because it's June fourteenth. Selfish Wiggy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> my bad. Okay. Person like I selfishly want to keep everyone out of my studio, even if I'm not there. I don't want to ever share my space with anyone. It's my studio. I built it. But you, you're you're like you're ready to share everything with everybody. Good for you. God bless you. Yeah, Bernie's yeah. one of those progressives who wants to give other people's stuff away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Please. Well, that 
that was the back end of a Bernie Sanders clip yeah. where Bernie was like, hey, let's let's put your studio up and have like some shared housing or something with it. And <clears throat> what's very clear to me is that the idea was floated past Wiggy of mm-hmm. using his of sharing his studio with Andy, with Whoever. musicians, artists. Yeah. And this is his way of being like, no fucking way. I am taking my ball and going home. Right. No one's touching my studio. So right. that might be in the contract too. Right. To the point where Opie, suppo- like the, the, the reasons are a little nebul- nebulous for why he got canned from Sirius. But someone saying, oh, he filmed someone taking a shit. And then, oh, he, he invaded Stern's compound. I'm sure it was just that. I'm sure he went into Stern's compound when he wasn't there. And he wasn't supposed to be in there. And Stern said, fire him. And Opie, yeah. I'm sure, was doing so poorly that they said, yeah, we don't need you. We, we, we barely need him, but we need him more than we need you. So uh, the next clip is called Empty Studio and Souls. <laughs> My office is barren. I don't have anything in there because all I would do is just sit in there and, like, sleep. So I, I don't have any right. memorabilia. Uh-huh. I don't have anything personal uh-huh. in there. Maybe, maybe some pictures of my kids. That's it. I, w- I would like to. <laughs> That's just like Roy Keane, famous footballer, when he was coaching Sunderland and he never put anything on the walls because he didn't know when he'd be fired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Wiggy's that defendant that you never want to testify for himself. Never. Because he gives away way too much. He's not yes. helping his argument one little bit by bringing no. up the napping and sleeping. Yeah. He's just awful. He's such a 79. Right. Oh. Because you can't, because, well, he, the, if you want to, like, use different examples, let's say, for example, um, the the timeline when he, he met Beth. Is it 20 years ago, 21, 22, 23? Everybody remembers when they met someone, the, at least the month of the year, and then they remember their wedding anniversary, they remember their fucking birthday. If, if you give a, you value your life, you don't forget your woman's birthday. Um, but, um, and um, so at any rate, uh, he, you're right. He, he just always steps in his, he takes a dump on the sidewalk and then s- jumps in it. Yeah, <laughs> like he plays mud. He makes mud pies. See, that's, Dives I just right like in. to rifle through. I just want to see the geography of that area. Speaking of kids, kids. oh, yeah. look what An- look what Andy's life has become. Andy <laughs> used to have fun. Exactly. Now he's so Andy is called into the show, but from home presumably. You hear, sounds like sounds like he crashed a daycare and uh, uh, they're having a rave. <laughs> it's it's Bubby point two point uh, <laughs> Two point oh, yeah. Taking you, care of a kid. You guys have <laughs> no idea. I am coming off of three days alone with Ben. I am literally. I cannot wait <laughs> to drop him off to school in ten minutes. I am literally going. Poor off Andy. Mind. Andy, another guy who seems to hate children. <laughs> this guy is in his fifties and he has a toddler. Yeah. Like he had to check some bucket or make his life look like important in some totally. way. I'm not sure. Or it's just a prop like Beth. Yeah. Uh, the, the kittens are to Beth. Right. So this kid is like a prop to Andy. Right. And child, he's going to use it. And, and child gain Cocker some kind Spaniel. Of <laughs> What's the parent difference? credit. <laughs> but he's, he's just self-admitted that three days alone with the kid is driving him nuts. Yeah. You know, I have two kids, and I spend a lot of time, a lot of days alone with my kids, and I don't think I've ever, you know, I, there there may have been one or two moments, but, like, this guy, it just, it goes to show you, like, the title, Empty Studio and Empty Souls. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't see the parenting skills coming through very well. No. Steve, what was it like for you, really Andy? Be something. Yeah. I mean, you had a great life, you know, you got famous on TV. Okay. Next one is early dismissal. So, do you think you will ever set foot in Howard Stern Tower again? You know, honestly, yes. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. Oh, I mean, okay. I think if we have. What day like, will that be? <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you when I. I'll tell you what I imagine. Okay. I think I'll tell you what I imagine. He has to know. New York at this point now is, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not keeping up. I'm not up to date on COVID USA news, really, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm concentrating on a shitload of other things, including the Habs being too down in the series against Tampa. Fuck you, Tampa. Um, the um, the the most, our business is getting back to quote unquote normal in New York. Okay, I'm not in New York. I don't keep up on it. Right. This is more of a Samantha question. 
Yeah. So maybe based people on, in the based comments. On what, based on what that, you've that read, though, there. so far. I mean, does it seem like the country's kind of rounded the corner, at least, with the vaccinations and what have you? Yes. Things have okay. changed dramatically from where mm-hmm. they were a year ago now. Sure. And They'd have to. Businesses have opened. Um, a lot of um, different just tourist things have opened up. A mm-hmm. lot of it is, you know, if you prove you're vaccinated, you don't need a mask. Um, some of it is, you know, it's a free for all in some places. Mm-hmm. You know, the mask mandate in Pennsylvania has been lifted. I know down in Georgia and Florida in Georgia, they don't wear anything because I know yeah. some people down there and yeah. Hey Kayla, yeah. <laughs> but also in Florida, it's kind of half and half yeah. depending on where you are. So things are getting back to normal. Things are opening up. It's definitely an upward trend towards yeah. more socialization, more businesses, mm-hmm. more economy happening. Mm-hmm. And there's no reason I mean, he's really finding, I think Wiggy is really having a hard time arguing against going out in public and, and having a life again and doing things and eating in right. restaurants. Right. There's well, no Andy, numbers to disprove it. No. If Andy can come back, why can't he is, my guess, my, my big question. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> okay. I'm in. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, Andy. Here's what I imagine. Let's say there's a special guest that day, you know, like a band or something. You know, the Rolling Stones right. are coming in. <laughs> Mick Jagger. Oh, no. <laughs> I forgot you mentioned them again. Mick Jagger is the fucking smegma under his, t- under his dick. His fucking foreskin that he just can't. Well, his foreskin's long gone, you know, if you, if you take his, uh, his heritage into consideration. But let's just that that name that Mick Jagger and the Stones is rolling around in his fucking asshole and he just cannot get off that. <laughs> like okay. and I'll be like, well, you know, we need a place to broadcast from, so we'll go there. And who know I mean, who knows what the future's gonna be? You know what I mean? You don't know. Right. So I could right. yes, I could right. see that happen. I gotta make a some girls mock up with Wiggy under as in drag under every single cutout. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Happening. But I mean I also understand, I think Sirius XM is going to downsize and get rid of a whole bunch of those studios because they now realize people can do it from home. Really? Really? Yeah. You're going to be stuck at home. You might be stuck at home, Andy. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. With my equipment from 1956. Amazing. By the way, you probably... One thing I'll also give Andy, and uh, uh, just real quick, he at least moves things along on whatever show he's on. He's much more adept at flowing with stuff. And yes, he's an asshole, but at least he's a, 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 a dependable asshole. Wig's not even that. Yeah, Andy's really good at digging up dirt on people. He'll give them these questions that they have to answer or sure. else they have to do something. I, I don't yeah. really watch this stuff. I've right. seen it a few times. And... Listen to the way Wiggy and Robin are teaming up on Andy, mm-hmm. being like, yeah, you might have to go back to home and work from there. They might close this whole studio, all the yeah. studios. Like, they're putting impending doom on him. And he's like, no, I can't. I have to get away from this kid. I need my nanny to take over. <laughs> yeah. I need to snort rails in the bathroom at my studio. So, <laughs> What children? Get the f- you. Yeah. Yeah, number four, the next one, uh, news. What news? I love this. Have we discussed why the news is gone? No, I mean, uh, other than the fact that uh, we just, you know, we change things up all the time and we kind of incorporate the news into our show. Okay, let's let's get right off that. Raven, this is a great point of to departure of to discuss this one. Yeah. All right, so if you're pre-recording, the news is irrelevant because you're missing a whole day of something important that might have happened. Number two... Robin's inadequate at the news has been for years and Mm -hmm. it requires staff to deliver her notes. That means she has to print them out. She needs to develop a thought about, and then Wiggy has to care about it enough to know about it and talk about it and discuss it in a timely manner. Never going to happen. Not in this day and age. (laughs) That's right. So, but this is, we have to know, like Andy, if Andy's as much of a listener, a super fan as, as we were and are and whatever, you know, um, then he knows exactly why she's not doing the news. They don't, they've never explained it. And this is not Wig's way of explaining it because he still hasn't, you know, we incorporated it into the show. No, you don't. 
You, you, no. you gave up. The news was at the end and never in the middle. Like, unless there was some kind of, if there was some major, major event, you, it used to be the first six minutes of the show, you'd go right into it. David Spade knocked up Jillian Grace. That was the first thing they fucking talked about that day, I believe. And they went a half hour. Though I wish I missed those fucking days when they would actually be topical. Now there's no fucking chance. So he knows, but he's just poking at the fucking, you know, he's poking at the pelican. Right. Yeah, I was, gonna say the ba- I was gonna say the bear, but that's a gay term. <laughs> it's it's another passive aggressive slap in the dick. That's all yeah. they're doing to each other right now. Totally. Got it. Okay. There's no real game plan. I mean Okay. I missed the theme song. I missed the idea that I know it's coming. But I can You want can you want news? Change. Robin, would you mind yeah, doing some news Robin's for Andy? <laughs> I love Robin's news. Also, I we're do. doing well, like um Randy. We're supposed to be doing a three-hour show now. And so that would not things up. happen in... <laughs> okay, so they have no game plan. That's about as planned out as they are. Oh, that's interesting. That's great to hear from your fucking however many millions you pay this goddamn host. Thanks for nothing. Yep. Uh, if right. the news... No, that was, maybe that's one of the reasons I like the news. It meant I was getting another hour or more. I know, and what happens is now, now we end right. up doing a four-hour show, and then we be into a five-hour show. <laughs> that's all right. We can handle it. And guys, now we're ready to present to you a normal... Cron- we now <laughs> return to regularly scheduled mockery uh, <laughs> based on um, May 11th clips. And this is a lot about Emily Blunt and The Rock. And if this happens to get edited or unable to put on YouTube, you know it's because the pre-recorded uh, Emily Blunt interview. But either way, he shits... Uh, we're going to have to do a reshinding on The Rock or a reverse reshinding because <laughs> he shits on him so much. He does. And Great. so, and he's just so jealous because he's so fucking like he's such a success story. Uh, the first clip is called "One A." I'm a chameleon. Yeah, I mean, I've worked. I know she rolls her eyes because everyone says it, but I've worked with Meryl three times, and I just find her completely riveting. Like, I just I love being in a scene with her. I love watching her. I love her old movies. I love her recent movies. I just think she's she's just this chameleon like weirdo who can do anything and i just think she's amazing okay so they're i'm not sure i guess because he's going to start talking about how he's a chameleon i love it too but i think it's because i have there's i'm a chameleon i don't know the real me i have spent a no you're always you that's complete rubbish you never change that's not true i no, i don't i'm not even sure what i am and it's as a as a person, I, I'm always probing to try to figure <laughs> out well, how do some people just know who the fuck they are, you know? Okay, I have to cut that up because it's over 30 seconds, obviously, guys. But does it sound to you that she's just completely sussed him out as being a complete fraud? Yeah, she's lathering him up any way she can. Um, she wants to stay in good status with him and mm-hmm. be like... Well, we get into it later where she's like, you're good at dinner, but you're not good on vacation. <laughs> so basically small increments of time she can handle yeah. him with other people around to carry the conversation. Totally. Oh, and so maybe yeah. it says something about you. I don't know. I'm always refreshed when I meet people who are just authentically, truly themselves and unwaveringly. Because I think I'm sort of waveringly myself. Like I will definitely... Okay, I, she sounds like a. She, now there's where she kind of loses me, and she sounds a little airheaded uh, actress. But um, she is a smart cookie. I'll give her that. Like she's got a, quite a career, you know, in her in her CV. However, it's funny because she's talking about people who are authentic. He's never authentic. No, and that's always been his problem. Thank you. That's why I clipped it. Okay, so maybe we'll keep the other one. <laughs> okay, number two. I have to go to sleep, aka pre-recorded. Enamored. Drink. Hey Jim, you have the last word, and then Rob and I have to go. We have very important meetings. Hey now, I have to hey go now. to sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Say again. Who's your go-to, Blunt or Radajowski? Hmm. Okay. First of all, fake uh, back office caller, not a real caller, of course. Um, but uh, I have to go to sleep. This wasn't you guys thinking, perhaps, like amongst in the in the group that. It's nighttime, and yeah. they're recording this later in the day or whatever. Yeah, that's that was my thinking. Oh, okay. 
Um, it may be. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. If she lives out in, L- in the West Coast in L.A. time, like there's no way she's waking up at 3 a.m. to do a fucking interview with him at 7 and or 4, you know, 4 a.m. equivalently. Fuck it. Uh, yeah. Yep. He, it's pretty clear, like, how irrelevant he is. And if people are going to do his interviews, he's got to adjust a bit. Yep. And part of that is relinquishing control and pre-recording the night before and having it where... Any of the interviews with people are always like no windows or if there are windows, it's um, because they're, you know, 10 a.m. in the morning or 9 Mm a.m. But it's very it's very strange. Like you never really see much of a background. They're always in a room with all walls and no windows. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's probably pre-recorded night before evening before late Mm -hmm. afternoon, something Mm -hmm. like that. Okay, uh, next clip. Wigtardo, desperate for love. That's the sad thing about me. I would have been, I would have fallen in love with Handjob Connie because I would be like, oh my god, I think I'm in love. Because yeah. anyone I met, I was in love with. Anybody who would have me, I would be in love with. I was so desperate for any kind of love, and um, I wasn't used to anyone being kind to me, or you know. I think in addition to just Ben Stern and, and, and the family and friends, he was just an asshole. Like he just grew up to be a, a really annoying piece of shit. Not, not so much a recluse, but when you did get to know him, he was annoying. And then um, he decided like any attention was good attention. Like as a kid, he decided I'm going to be an asshole just to get attention because that's the only way I know how to appeal to people. Nothing was ever good enough for him. No. no amount of attention or love or hobbies or anything given to him was ever enough. He right. was always needy. looking for more. It was an empty pit of yeah. needy. Yep. Like that. So if somebody would have been nice enough to uh, let me call them and then give me a hand job, I think I might have I might have actually attempted to uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, maybe we have uh, something going on here. Let's go out on a date. Yeah. Would have ruined that? everything. <laughs> That's you. called being desperate. That's not being needy. <laughs> I hear parking attendants often give free hand jobs. So <laughs> yeah, they also maybe that's how Ralph got his job. Now this next clip is fantastic, fan fucking tastic. It's called "I Know My Customer" and it's Beth related. And Beth was with you because you know she has a life, <laughs> and I'm asleep. <laughs> and someone made the suggestion. Let's go wake Howard up <laughs> and shake him out of bed. And Beth said, "Listen." <laughs> Howard will kill you. No, I don't mean <laughs> yeah. figuratively. I mean literally will kill you. And she talked you guys okay. all out of it. Which okay, hold on, hold on for a second. That's that's this is this is. I know my customer part one. This is going to come up. Uh, so this is them on vacation together, whatever. They happen to be sharing some. I don't know some fucking villa. I don't know. Right. And okay, so that's self-explanatory. But the second clip needed a little exposition, exposition, guys. Thank God. Listen, and Beth uh, is no fool. Beth knows her customer, as she always says about you. She always says this about you. She goes, <laughs> "I know my customer." And I steal yes. it from her now, and I use it when I work with actors. You got. <laughs> that sounds uh, like hooker speak, if if anything. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I know my customer. My, I can't even think of my wife using that phrase with me. Like she knows what food I can't stand, whatever. She knows my, my likes. She would never, ever, ever in a million years use that turn of phrase. <laughs> that is so cold. That, that's escort verbiage right there. <laughs> Transactional. <laughs> yeah, thank you. New, new verb in his, new word in his lexicon. I was telling Beth the story. She goes, and she did it for money, right? I go, no, she just wanted to jerk guys. And she, yeah. she couldn't wrap her head around. It. She didn't want to hear about it. Uh, Carrie, you're on the air in New Hampshire. <laughs> she yeah. did it for money, right? She, presumably, like she, she was, she was a hooker, right? <laughs> there had to be some kind of exchange of goods, right? Yeah, totally. And so she's cl- okay. Now this next one is going in back into the still the Emily Blunt thing. Sorry to play with time here, guys. Uh, Tom Ryan, no Jack Ryan, you dumbo. Now this is in relation to the is it an Amazon series or a Netflix series? Oh no, there are movies. Oh, I didn't know. Sorry. Yeah, uh, well, no, uh, Emily's Jack- Emily's husband did. So Jack Ryan, where- isn't he the uh, the uh, Tom Clancy character? Yeah, exactly. 
Okay. So, I mean, it was movies before with Harrison Ford, Clear and Present Danger, um, uh, not Hunt for Red October, but th- that, that guy. Um, and then it became Patriot Games, whatever. And then I think Ben Affleck did a turn and, and some of all fears are they going to heard it was a bomb. I don't know. Either way. So I guess it's a, an ongoing series now with, uh, what's her husband's name? Oh, John Krasinski. John, John Krasinski. Krasinski. That's it. Okay. So he, he, f- he fucked up the plug. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> look, this is a, we missed this for the seventy nine episode, but it's all right. And and we know this. Unlike Oliver's Travels, you love the script for A Quiet Place too, and you've done a yes. wonderful job with this. Your husband came through and wrote a great script and directed. Who knew? Who believed in him? You. Okay, then we go continuing, guys. So there you go. And now I believe in him. He's terrific, we and he's terrific. <laughs> And he's true. We all do. No, you made us a believer, and 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 we love him as Tom Ryan also on Amazon. I gotta say that. What did I say? He loves him as Tom Ryan. I like Tom Ryan. I saw him in that. But Jack Ryan. I'm sorry. Oh my god. This uh, uh, this reminds me. This reminds me of ancient Larry King getting the the fucking dressing down from Seinfeld for fucking up and forgetting about his, his sitcom. Nice. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Good call. Nope. So number seven, we're going into uh, Dwayne Johnson territory. And Dwayne Johnson, for years, so first of all, he came in ages ago during that whole late 90s, early 2000s sort of synergy between WWF, specifically when it was WWF, and um, and the show. And there was some kind of quid pro quo. It was probably worth doing an episode with James Santiago or something talking about the little give and take they had because they were in, down in the ratings and they thought maybe Howard could help them I don't know, shore up their ratings when WCW was uh, uh, still uh, still a thing. So uh, he has been shitting on Rock constantly since Rock's star has just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And his public opinion of Dwayne Johnson is excellent. And he's a good, great talk show guest. Have you ever seen him on those late night shows? Yeah, I have. I also looked up his estimated worth as $330 million. Christ. He's part of the Fast and Furious. He's got um tons of movies he's been doing and a lot of them are family friendly yep plus whatever wwf money he's got before that yep. so him and emily did a movie together called jungle cruise mm-hmm. and she's got knowledge of him but wiggy had just <clears throat> excuse me pardon me wiggy had just bashed the rock mm-hmm. uh in days previous to this interview with her Saying, you know, what a dunce he is, what an idiot, <laughs> all these other, you know, and he's run. He was talking, I think, about running for governor, yeah, or a uh, senate or one of those positions. Anyway, um, he does a rescinding here with Emily, and he's also kind of like passive aggressive dick slapping, uh, yeah. at The Rock. So let's listen up, yeah. Uh- but now I, I see he became, you know, a movie star. He don't want to do my show. And I'm like, eh, fuck him. I'm mad at him. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not show. A, I'm not happy that he doesn't do the show anymore. And yeah, now he's a big star. Time for payback. Come on in. Yeah. Right, Gary, Gary, tell me he's coming in and I'll be a happy man. I wish I could tell you he's coming in, but I do have to tell you how he got on the show the first time. I don't know if you remember. We didn't even book him. Right. Elephant Boy. <laughs> Said, can I play, please bring in a wrestler friend? <laughs> Elvin Boy is a better producer than Bowie. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. Completely forgot about that. I remember the appearance. I just don't remember that um, uh, that they didn't have a hand in it, which, of course, it makes perfect sense because Bowie's a fucking 79 himself. Um, yep. Even right there, Wiggy's like, tell me he's coming in and I'll be happy a guy. I'll be a happy guy. Right. That means a total rescinding. If yes. he's coming in, I'll kiss his ass. That's but if right. he's not... Fuck him. He should yeah. be in my studio. And it says it says it's been him for it's been his mo for ages for decades now. Fuck him until he does my show. After he doesn't do my show anymore, fuck him again. And so Seinfeld kissed his fucking ass, to put him down for ages, saying it's not a fun. And I never watch that show. Blah blah blah. As soon as Jerry came back, you know that show was brilliant. <laughs> you never I thought you never watched it. Never Asshole. watched a lick of it. Asshole. You kidding? Yeah. <laughs> So, so good to see through the rock. Dwayne Johnson. Oh, okay. Bring him in. Wow. Dwayne Johnson, the rock. Yeah, I mean, dude. 
Who, you know, I had you in with Elephant Boy, don't it? Maybe that's what it is. Like, I'm and a reminder. Yeah, we remind him of a time in his life that wasn't yeah. going so it wasn't well. Wasn't so good. Dwayne Johnson in 99, whatever, he was as big as wrestling would get. He was making good fucking money and he had likeness rights to himself. So he was, this was well after, you know, this is a, the, not the, uh, the fucking, you know, wood shedding days, the, uh, sorry, the factory days of the WWF where guys didn't make, so, you know, a- ancillary money from, um, video, like game sales and dolls and, you know, whatever. So he was, uh, he was doing fine, and he was only going to get bigger, and only did get bigger. He went out, and he decided, "Fuck! Now it's time to do movies, time to do TV, time to do anything," and uh, and making a shitload and having a good time, seemingly. That is so true. Yeah. So anyway, so he it's not he he you know he's upset because he came on with Elephant Boy. He's too big. He has no time to do your fucking show, and no need. He knows he doesn't need to do your goddamn show. You You're need him fine. clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you know, long- I, I can't be angry about that. No. I get it. It's like, you know, I want to come in. Okay, so Robin says, and she follows that up. Thank you, Mark Shapsvich, <laughs> by the way. I think he clipped these, but I couldn't get the uh, the format right. Um, yeah, Robin, I wouldn't come. <laughs> Robin says, I wouldn't come here either. <laughs> it's like, you know, I want to come in, but every time I have flashbacks, I have PTSD. I remember being there with Elephant Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, I wouldn't come here either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I watched the movie and I went, oh, shit, this is a real... Okay, so, I mean... What, what can I tell you? Like Robin, she's just in in a way. We're not. I don't think I'm overanalyzing it. But we said for for ages now, if she could have done better, she would have, and she would have left him in the dust decades ago if she could have. She just never could. No, never uh, had the opportunity. No, and and tried, and again, we'll try to get that fucking talk show if I can find it. I swear oh. to God, guys, I'm going to w- set the whole week off so I can rewatch it and get every little thing out of it for you guys. Uh, number nine, I'm a dumb wrestler who took a lot of juice. <laughs> so, and Rock's been saying, you know, uh, some idiot out there said, you know, gee, The Rock should run for president. And now The Rock, rather than saying, listen, I'm a big dummy. <laughs> I was a wrestler, and I, I take a lot of, I took a lot of juice. I, I assume he did. I mean, don't you? His head's three well, times smaller than the rest of them. The Samoans and, do get big. <laughs> okay, maybe he's a natural. I don't know, but <laughs> but he's literally what his name implies. He's he's a rock. Oh my God! The, what project much? The the rock is. I'm not going to say he's he's clearly some kind of marketing genius as well. Not all of his films do amazing, but a lot of them do. Most of them do more than their fucking fair share. And he's smart enough to align himself with the right people and do amazing business. I mean, I, I, I he's internationally he's incredibly beloved, and uh, is his star is blazing like you know like movie stars used to, and you know like Clark Gable anybody. He's a modern day <laughs> Robert Mitchum. I don't know. Go ahead. Wiggy hates him so much. All he can do is defame his reputation at this point. And devalue, yeah. And devalue, yeah. That's that's his whole it, motive in life. It if eats him alive. He's not saying their name wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has no thoughts. <laughs> and, you know, he's a lovely guy. I got nothing against him. But, like, all of a sudden he goes, well, <laughs> they, they, well people want you to run for president. So instead of saying, listen, I'm, I'm a shithead, he goes... <laughs> Well, if that's what the people want, I'll consider it. Like, there's going to be this huge up, uproar for another president who was, you know, born on TV. Now, we we tried that. It, it- okay, so I'm going to go into a, a, a Trump bashing, I'm presuming, but I, I don't I don't right. have that that part. But at any rate, the next part is opinions from a 79. The Rock's with us. <laughs> as soon as this big flunkhead has to answer a question. Where they go, Rock, how do you feel about abortion rights? And then he's like, uh, 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 um, I'm for it. Oh, oops. <laughs> Suddenly people don't love the Rock. Same with Matthew McConaughey. You can't figure out what the fuck this guy's talking about. I've interviewed Matthew. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you'd never know from the way you're treating him. Fuck. I've never, he's, he's getting closer to... It used to take him ages to get pissed off about someone and talk shit about them, or he talked shit about them because he knew he'd never have a chance of, re- of interviewing them. Now it's like, interview me, don't get do my do my show, don't do my show, fuck you anyway. He's gonna throw shit no matter what he, no matter if you do a show or not. 
Yeah. You're you're going to get it on the front end or the tail end. Right. But you just have to make nice while you're in there and then um, wait for your rescinding and we'll catch up with you later. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we got one. It's, it's, he's playing. He's helping us daily with this shit. So the next clip is called President the Rock. And you're going to have Governor uh, McConaughey, Governor Caitlyn Jenner, right? Yeah. And you'll have and President, President uh, Rock. Rock. President <laughs> the Rock. It's the Rock, right? <laughs> the Rock and what, Johnson. And by the way, President the, the Rock Johnson. And you know what's great? The arrogance of the Rock. Like, he's like, you know what? I'm kind of a bigger box office star than everyone else, so I'm just going to go straight to president. I don't even have to be a governor. <laughs> like that's the arrogance. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm running for president. Okay, so you ran for governor and treated it serious as cancer for the enough to, enough to fucking make a you know bullshit you know uh, a spiel for a fucking year. I'm sure that was excruciating for listeners because he wouldn't shut up about it back then. And then he turns out he gave the wrong address on his um his uh what do you call it uh, gubernatorial application, application yeah. form. Yeah, and that that was actually um, a chargeable offense. Anything for content with him. Anything goes. Yeah. And he had no intention just, of running for it. He was just sort of like basically saying, if I did this, it would be the same. It would be, um, I'd be doing it for the same reason, just to plug my show. For <laughs> He'd not be doing it seriously. So he's presuming, of course, everybody's doing it for fucking uh, shits and giggles for a lark. Yeah. yeah. Because I have a bigger box office. Because than I'm other. a movie star. <laughs> right. If I was a television star, I'd have to be a governor. <laughs> It's fucking nuts. It's nuts. What's going on out there? Yeah, I'm just going to skip straight to president. I'm My box office is billions. <laughs> you know, I, Schwarzenegger had to be a governor because he was a foreigner. And and I don't know, Clint Eastwood started out as a mayor of a small town. You know? Yeah, Carmel. And he was a huge star, actually. But and, and, and ended up being a mayor for a long time, actually. I don't think he um, uh, stopped for a while. Yep. Let's not forget Jesse Ventura. Yep. Another another famous wrestler who made mm-hmm. it big in politics. Mhm. And, and was the, on Stern. And was a movie star, like a movie star. He, he was in big movies yeah. for quite a while there. He had a run. Predator. Yeah, Predator, also Demolition Man at one point. He was in uh, The Running Man. That was funny actually. It was a good that was one of the underrated <laughs> flicks. And but fuck them. I'm going to be president. You know. God knows what's going to go in Congress. It's going to look like the like the the dais at a Comedy Central roast. It, it'll be like a reality. Tel- okay. Yeah. Everybody will be there but you, Wiggy. Boom. <laughs> exactly. Number 12, marbles are aphrodisiacs, a.k.a. my wife couldn't memorize five lines. And I believe he's making reference to the Days of Our Lives. Was it Days of Our Lives or All My Children? I can't remember, but there's a soap. There's Young a clip and the on restless. there. It Young, doesn't no, matter. Either way, it was a soap, and she had a walk on bar that is excruciating. Yeah, like it was my great. Wife no, said, n- no words. No words. Yeah, yeah, no words. My wife said, what a great role. I remember my wife once got a role on <laughs> a soap opera. She had to know five lines, and she couldn't get the five lines memorized. <laughs> I mean, the memorizing lines. <laughs> <and> five- <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's yeah. a gift. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, 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 you know, Damn. the movie engrosses three over oh. okay we don't need the rest of that but that's one of the funniest things ever because if it's just, well, it. she's plays a waitress and guys if you watch it I'll, I'll i won't put it in the clip but we'll play it another time just for fucking shits and giggles um the next one is called marble talk is verboten in england thing happened on social media afterwards like people just talking about and talking about talking about but i think when it actually came out and it did what it did on that opening weekend it was just we were astonished it was, was the, the lovemaking, Emily, Listen, don't avoid the question, Howard. was the lovemaking wild? I mean, how, how do you express <laughs> that? I mean, your life. And also, I would imagine when I'm. Oh, God, he's just vile. And <laughs> yeah, it's more evidence of transactional behavior. Yeah. You know, a movie makes money. So you get sex. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm a success. If I'm not successful, I don't get laid. Movie makes three hundred million dollars. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Financially, I mean, you got to get back. No, come on! I don't what? talk about money from England. We don't talk about that. But my my boy, parents have never said. So what do you earn? Like, would never imagine asking. Me. I, I don't think talk about of money. me as your parents asking you. No, I Emily, can't. Emily, we need to, we <laughs> need your bank to be account. my husband. I don't see you that way. But Emily, this. 
She's correct about that, by the way. I've got loads of British friends, and we there have never been discussions about finances, ever. They talk about work. Yeah, fine. How's work going? That kind of shit. But never about how much you're making, how much you need. Are you in trouble? Are you in, you know, like, we're doing badly, whatever. They're very pr- pr- prideful that way. Um, anyway. I thought that was a nice shutdown move on her part. And he's not going to take shit. He wants to hang around, so he'll he'll have to eat that. Number 14, The Rock is a great actor. Yeah. (laughs) So when you work with The Rock on um, uh, the Disney Jungle. Great uh, actor. Yeah, one of the greatest actors (laughs) I've ever seen. Do you know what, you guys? And let me just speak about my friend here. Because okay. he is one of my favorite people on Earth, number one. Right. But I will tell you something that people... Okay, so she's defending him. And, yeah, go ahead. It just pains Wiggy to bring up his name. Oh, the totally. Rock. Exactly. And she totally, like, shoves it right back down his throat, how great he is. Mm-hmm. Number 15, Wiggy warns Emily about The Rock say to you hey how about doing this movie with the rock you might have hesitation because before you knew him you might say gee this guy was from the wrestling world and i understand he's got big muscles and he has a certain look and he has a certain ability to do action films and that eye but thing you might does. also yeah, he does that's how to raise one eyebrow but you know in a way you've got to be careful in those situations because again if you know you what's get funny in, is i remember watching him in get smart and being like oh my god he's so funny she was gonna say he's so funny He's yeah. he's likable. He's likable. People like him. So sorry, Howard. You can't. <laughs> your bullshit doesn't work on people with eyes and ears. Sorry. Uh, number f- sixteen. Blunt cunt. Said when you were a kid, yeah. you got teased all the time because For blunt sure. rhymed with cunt, and people would call yes. you Emily Cunt, which <laughs> yes. is like crazy. I mean, you know what? It's almost too no, easy. No, it was like so easy. It's That's when you know you're growing easy. up. When you get called blunt pencil when you're. A kid. It's just what it is. Like it's it's, it's, it's a gimme, <laughs> and he's just he he loves being able to say cunt to a woman. So this is ha- this is heaven yep. for him. Yep. And he knows she can take it. So number seventeen, blunt cunt revenge. You have the best revenge for all the people that called you cunt. <laughs> for all those now, cunts. Yeah, for all those cunts. They go they go down. Hey, that Emily Blunt. Like they know it's you. Oh no, it's success. Blunt now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm sure those people are still calling her that, but for very different reasons. Either way, um, he's always got revenge on the mind. It's funny. It's it's again. It's yeah. It's, you know, it's wiggy by numbers, isn't it? It is. It really is. It's so easy to clip anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Blunt now. <laughs> Can you imagine blunt to you. <laughs> if you became the cunt like the Rock, and then you'd be like, "Hi, uh, Steven Spielberg calling for the cunt." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it would I be think really we good. Pitch, we should pitch this to Disney for the poster. They will love it. It's right. Okay. She's such a good sport. She really is. And she's still classy about it. I don't know. It must be the accent. But it's a spotlight on 79 IQ here. Mm-hmm. That's why none of his ideas will ever get greenlit in Hollywood. Never. Because you've got Fartman, you've got what? Porky's Revenge, High School right. Days. Blunt, you know, blunt cunt. Come on, give me the cunt. Yeah. That's his idea for... No, sorry. Pass. <laughs> Next Pass. one is called Fuck the Rock, I Hate Him. She really likes The Rock that much? Well, she's certainly convincing when she says mm. what she said. And I do mm. love him in Jumanji. There's some things that he's done that would lead you to believe there's more to The Rock than... Smelling what the rock is cooking. Right. Yeah. So I see that. Robin, you just made a mistake. You went against you again against your, your lord and master and you're gonna have to get punished <laughs> somewhere down the line. Yeah, we used to have him on the show when he was a wrestler. Yeah. Um, that, but now I, I see he became, you know, a movie star. You don't want to do my show and I'm like, eh, fuck him. Okay, so that was the um, that was basically going into the clip we played earlier um, with Mark Shapsevich, I'm pretty sure. Or is he repeating himself when he's saying this, fuck him? I, I don't know. Okay. I'll be honest. Okay, I think that that one goes into old territory. So we're done for that day, guys. And I think and this is going to be a long episode, but we hope you have appreciated it. And I apologize for any um, uh, di- disorganization as opposed to normally. I'm usually better about this, but it's been a long week, long couple of weeks. And so I want to thank um, everybody for 
we are now, by the time you hear this, we will have passed 100,000 downloads on Podbean, and that includes all platforms as well, but not YouTube. That's a separate uh, metric. So thank you guys for making the show a success. Um, I don't know what percentage. <laughs> thank you, Raven and Sam, of course, for and, and Bob and Carrie and everybody else who's helped out and is going to continue to help out in the future uh, to make the show what it is. We love you guys. And uh, we've got loads of new episodes coming down the pike, and we're going to try to get them out in a timely fashion, as always on Sunday, but extra episodes during the week, uh, as announced on our, in our Facebook group. Um, but uh, thank you to Mike Savicevich for the uh, clips. And was it who was it that provided the photo of Beth that we're going to put in the thing? Jer- was it Jeremy or was it Isaac? Oh, that's Isaac. Okay. Isaac got the meme. That's getting in there. So I'm going to try to remember to put that in. And... Um, yeah, we love you guys. So take care of yourselves and stay safe. Thank you. Bye. So many of these people, almost all of them that we see, are so poor and they are so black. And this is going to raise lots of questions for people who are They're watching so the story. Unfold. So black. If they had been less black. <laughs> you know what? Halle Berry. Causes many problems. Halle Berry would have survived. Right. Why couldn't we have a, a town full of Halle Berry? Look at how goddamn black they are! <laughs>